high. Sky Signature Suites offers remarkable units for rent, featuring sophisticated floor plans, designer finishes, resort-like amenities, and breathtaking views. Situated in the heart of Ice District, Sky is the address for socializing, dining, entertainment, and fun. A building like no other in a location like no other. Visit SkySignatureSuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Legacy Heating and Cooling is the number one heating and cooling company for people who want heating and cooling. Because you'll save a bundle by bundling. Then you can use hot, cold, hot, cold. Come on, thermostat, do what you're told. Turn up the heat, turn up the cold to the vent, start pushing out tornadoes. Bundle by furnace, this of AC, gonna get a deal from Legacy. Oh, yeah. Save a bundle when you bundle your new furnace and AC from Legacy today. Plus, no payments and no interest for one year. That's how you build your legacy. Legacy Heating and Cooling. You're listening to Rogers Game Night on the official voice of the Edmonton Oilers, 630 Chan, and on the Oilers Radio Network. I mean, we're obviously you don't uh, hold anything back. You, you want to push them, uh, as much as you can. I don't know why we're playing seven and five to finish but i mean i guess that's the way it worked out for us this year for some reason but uh it's it's definitely a, a lot to, right before going into the playoffs but i mean at this point um uh, you've played 75 76 games so i mean you're in uh, you're in good shape and can handle it for sure um but no i mean it's not you don't want to hold anything back uh we're still looking to, to improve our game and uh, push your points here that's Ryan Nugent Hopkins, the birthday boy. He turns 31. Rob Brown, you and me are getting old. Uh, five games in seven days for the Edmonton Oilers. They win tonight. Puts them in a position where they can tie Vancouver. Vancouver does have the tiebreakers, but they could tie them uh, for top spot in the span- uh, standings if they beat them tomorrow night in regulation. We'll have to wait and see on that front. Uh, but uh, what, what do you think is going through the minds of the Arizona players? I talked, <laughs> I talked to Bill Armstrong, their GM downstairs. It's got to be a difficult situation. It would be, and it's it's not so much just the players. The players are used to guys have been traded, guys have been waived, guys have signed with new different teams. But when you've got a long-term contract, you got you're set for a couple of years. You got family, you got kids in school. Uh, you like where you're at, and then everything just comes out. Now it's. It's not as though they've just been told they're moving. Now it's just, well, we, it might be here. You might not be here. Your kids might finish school here. They might be gone somewhere else. And then as I, I read a couple of things, was Clayton Keller talking about all your family, your friends are all texting you. What's going on? It just takes away from your, your focus. And I, I think I read the coach that before the 14th game losing streak was when they found out the first time that they might be moving. It does affect the players. Uh, I, I don't know how or why it came out at this point. Uh, this is something that should have been waiting until the end of the season. So, I mean, it, it affects the standings. All and right. An Arizona team right now is playing teams that the points actually but, mean something. But they can score. That's the one thing they can do. That's good old Ford Keys to the game. The official partner of the Edmonton Oilers built Ford Brown. No Connor McDavid. Uh, Troy Stetcher, the former Coyote, is in for Cody Ceci. Uh, Derek Ryan back in for Sam Carrick. And well, Calvin a, Pickard starting a goal. Well, I mean, it's just about playing the proper way. Uh, Arizona will try and, and trade chances. They're a team that has nothing to play for. So now they're just looking at stats. They're, they will play loose. There will be guys flying the zone they'll be looking to create odd man breaks but they're going to give up a lot themselves so for the Oilers just play the same way the way that you can be successful keep the opposition chances down don't make the big mistakes the Edmonton Oilers if they find that consistency of playing good solid defensive hockey they will win hockey games they will win playoff series and it's not something you just turn on playoff game number one. You got to go into the playoffs playing that way. Tonight's just another opportunity for them to fine tune that going into the playoffs. That's our inside the game analyst, Rob Brown. More with Rob and Reed Wilkins coming up during the end of the roll. First and second intermissions. Cam Moon is ready to go. He's got the call of tonight's game coming up next. The Arizona Coyotes and the Edmonton Oilers live from Rogers Place on Four Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Honey, did you wash my jeans? I'll need them for the game. Uh, no. I didn't have time. So what am I going to wear? Sorry, hon. Why don't we just sign up for the Press Gallery subscription laundry service? We should. One less thing to worry about. And? I'll get my phone. Go to forgetlaundry.ca. Just follow the instructions. Hey, that was easy. And I got my first three months at half price. Press Plus Laundry, weekly from the Press Gallery. Forget laundry today. 
At the Chop Leaf, Greens for Lunch gets you moving. Now you can shake, shake, shake it. Made with fresh greens and vegetables. Choose from nine delicious, oh so shakeable salads. Or try it as a wrap or rice bowl. So, however you shake it, you'll enjoy something you can feel good about. Visit the Chop Leaf near you or order online today to enjoy some freshness on the go. Blue Collar Work deserves big dollar perks. Get a heavy wallet with heavy metal equipment and rentals. Heavy metal equipment and rentals is hiring heavy equipment technicians, maintenance supervisors, PM servicemen, maintenance coordinators, and pretty much every other position that makes Alberta go. We help move the earth that makes Alberta grow. So why not work for a company that makes your bank account grow too? Visit heavymetalequipment.ca to find your new career. Heavy metal equipment and rentals. Helping you move the earth. For years now, we've been warning Edmontonians on the hazards of our stormwater facilities. While they may appear to look like still ponds, there is moving water beneath the surface, which makes the ice dangerously... The unpredictability of stormwater facilities makes them treacherously unsafe for all winter activities, even walking. So think twice. Don't go on the ice. A safety message from Epcor. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, We see the rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. Exclusive NHL broadcast, Bob Stoffer and Cam Moon on the Oilers Radio Network. Oilers host the Arizona Coyotes. Good evening, Cam Moon, along with Bob Stoffer, Reed Wilkins, Rob Brown, Jack Michaels, Brendan Escott. We are the Oilers Radio Network. Our starting lineup brought to you by Coventry Homes. Flexibility within reach. Get back in the game with customizable designs by Coventry Homes, the official builder of the Edmonton Oilers. For the Oilers up front, Leon Dreisaitl with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He turns 31 seasons today. And Zach Hyman on defense. Matias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard in goal. It's Calvin Pickard. For the Coyotes, Alex Kerfoot with Clayton Keller and Nick Schmaltz on defense. Yusuf Valamaki and Michael Kesselring. Karel Vamelka starts in goal. We drop the puck. We are underway. Garrett Rank and Jordan Samuels Thomas. They are the referees on the lines. Travis Garlitz and Travis Toomey. Puck in center ice. Keller on the left wing. Comes into the Oilers zone. Drop it back to Schmaltz. That's over his stick. And Hyman's going to get it out. He'll give the puck to Dry Seidel. Jam the puck down the right wing. Hyman up against the boards. Is able to boot it into the right wing corner. It'll go in behind the net. Valamaki will try to get it out. He can't. Puck goes to Hyman. Has it left wing corner in the Coyote zone. Now to Dry Seidel. Trying to jam it towards the goal. And that one goes off the outside of the net. Puck back to the blue line. Bouchard got it over to the boards. And Schmaltz able to get it out. The puck gets to center. Bouchard on the right wing to Hyman. He'll shoot it in. The milk out of his net will set it behind the goal. Moser right up the middle. Got it out. 
So Nurse, little bank pass to Henrique, misses him. It goes deep into the Coyotes' end, and it's sent around near the blue line. Stetcher keeps it in for Edmonton. Over to Henrique on the left wing. Into the left wing corner, but picked up by Cooley, and he'll get it up the right wing. Now to Dylan Gunther, the Edmonton product, the former Edmonton Oil Kings, able to dump it into the Oilers. So Nurse into the corner, but Cooley steals. He'll get it out to the middle, and the shot by Dursey off the stick of Picker. Buck along the left wing, and... Gunther's pass off is sticking out. This is the line the owner's got to worry about for me. Cooley and Gunther are starting to get cooking. Or a minute 40 into a scoreless first. The Oilers hosting the Coyotes. Moser up the left wing will get to center ice. He'll dump it. Pickard helps it around to Kulak. Now around to Holloway. Across the blue line to Darnay on the right wing to Perry. Comes into the Coyotes' end to Darnay. Right wing corner to Perry. A centering pass off the stick of Holloway. And it goes up against the boards inside the Arizona end. And it's flipped out to center. Picked up there by Michelli. Pass across to Doan. That's broken up by Kulak. At center is McLeod, comes in to the Arizona end, will dump it, he'll go in behind the net. Now it is McLeod off the side of the goal, back to the blue line to Bouchard, has it left wing point. Bouchard with a move on the left side towards the net, now one off a stick, and it gets through the middle, and Carcone got it out to center ice. Now to Yannick, will get the puck in on the left wing. Got it to the left wing corner, but that's it for the Coyotes, it's cleared out by Holloway. Valimaki comes into the Oilers zone. To Yannick on the left side. Try to make a little move. That's broken up by Ekholm. It does come out. Bouchard just inside the Edmonton zone. Up the right wing. Now to Brown. He'll come into Coyote territory. Cross ice pass. That goes through the slot. In from the left wing point is Ekholm. We're scoreless here in the first. Just over three minutes gone. Buck gets up to his center. And brought in on the right wing by Kerfoot. He'll roll it across the Edmonton blue line. And now Dursey will put it towards the net. And a save made by Pickard. He'll cover it up. Calvin Pickard with a sharp stop. Holds on to it. Three minutes, 17 seconds. Gone here in a scoreless first. Well, to me, some similarities between Arizona and Columbus. Arizona's got some speed up front. So does Columbus. The difference is Columbus has a couple more established defenders, namely Zach Wierenski. They don't have quite the same push in the back end in Arizona. Probably a better higher end forwards, but a little bit more established at this stage in their NHL careers. Guys like Keller and Schmaltz, but again, Cooley, third overall pick, and Gunther, ninth overall pick, are really starting to cook. Goes in behind the Edmonton goal. Stetcher will get it up the right wing. It won't be icing, pinching up. Well, as Moser and Dursey's able to clear it out. And Drysaddle will take it back into his own end. Drysaddle with points in three straight. Seventh in NHL scoring with 104 points as he'll cut through the middle. Now into the Arizona end. He'll dump it and the rims on the right. Hyman able to get the puck to the right wing corner. Comes loose. Kerfoot, top of the circle to Moser up through the middle. Schmaltz couldn't get a pass through to Keller. Schmaltz recovers it in the neutral zone. Left side to Keller. Just into the Euler end. Flips it right wing corner for Cooley. He'll take a hit from Nurse. Loose puck behind the goal. And it's dry saddle bringing it up the right wing. He'll one-hand it into the Coyote zone. Brown goes in behind the net. On the right for Kraus. Won't get it out. Puck gets to the middle. To dry saddle cross ice pass. That missed gain from the left point. A shot and a save made by Vamelka is Kulak. Place that one on net, and Vimelko will cover it up. We'll get a whistle. I think Leon probably should have shot the puck there from where he had to look from, but tried to make an unselfish play. No Connor McDavid tonight. Joined the team for the OPT this morning. I think there's a distinct possibility that he may end up suiting up tomorrow night. Just the feeling I have. You can see that. Second of a back-to-back against Vancouver. Who are 3-0 against the Oilers this year, but have not faced a Chris Knobloch coach to Edmonton Oilers That's right. team. Three games were pretty early. Face off to the right of Vimelka. Puck goes to Fogel. He shot, doesn't get through. Now Fogel centering pass, and Kolya Chodik was able to break it up. Puck comes to the blue line. Henrique will keep it in for Edmonton. Right wing to Kane. Can't get it towards the goal. Kraus will clear it. And the puck hits center ice. It's Kulak for the Oilers. Now to Dearnay through the middle. Off of Henrique. It goes up into the air. 
And they'll say that is offside at the Arizona Blue Line. Four minutes, 49 seconds. Gone here in the scoreless first period. Well, just like we all thought when Chris Knobloch was named head coach back on November the 13th, 45, 15, and 4 as head coach. Best record in the NHL since then. Edmonton winners of three straight coming into this. Coyotes have won three of four. And they can score. Yep. They won four three in overtime in Vancouver two nights ago. Canucks all played them, but the yep. they've, Coyotes found a way. Puck brought in on the right wing by McLeod. Goes to the right corner of the Coyote end. Now in behind the net over to the left. He'll get it out. And the shot by Ekholm wide of the net. And it comes out to the neutral zone. Matias Ekholm had slipped in from the left wing point. Puck brought in. Kessel ring to Michelli across. One timer. Save made by Pickard. Rebound scores. Following it up was Josh Doan. And he gives the Coyotes a 1 0 lead. Well, the owner's sleeping a little bit there. We talked about the fact Arizona can score, and they have. Big rebound kicked out by Pickard. Kind of looked like he stumbled. On a zone entry, his castle ring was leading a rush up the ice. He got clattered into, dropped it off, and a shot from McBain, and Doan was able to find the loose change. Doan gets his fourth of the year. Five minutes and 20 seconds into this first period. And Josh Doan gives the... at 33.6%. Arizona's penalty killing is 20. It's 15th on the road at 78.2, but 27th overall. We'll take a quick break. One nothing. Coyotes lead the Oilers. 6:09 gone here in the first. From Rogers Place, it's Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Edmonton Oilers fans, visit Ice District Authentics locations at Rogers Place and receive a free level wear hat with a minimum spend of $75 on any level wear product. Shop men's, women's, and youth apparel and headwear to take advantage of this amazing offer while quantities last. When you play the largest 50-50 in sports, everybody wins. Your support makes all of oil country a better place. A place of kindness, caring, and compassion. Uplifting those in need, changing lives forever. The largest 50-50 pot in professional sports is currently growing by the second. Get your tickets now at edmontonoilers.com and help change lives today. Maybe even your own. AGLC license number 645766. When the Oilers are on the ice, the big hits are a part of the game. But they shouldn't be a part of your drive. If you've been injured in a car collision, let James H. Brown and Associates and their over 200 years of combined injury law experience help you. Locally owned and proud Edmonton Oilers fans, James H. Brown and Associates is ready to support you with their unrivaled experience, unrivaled results, and unrivaled commitment. When accidents happen, head to jameshbrown.com. Edmonton Oilers fans, visit Ice District Authentics locations at Rogers Place and receive a free level wear hat with a minimum spend of $75 on any level wear product. Shop men's, women's, and youth apparel and headwear to take advantage of this amazing offer while quantities last. You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. one nothing. Arizona leads here in the first, but Michael Carconi goes off for a slash. Edmonton goes on the power play. It's brought to you by Atco Energy, your trusted energy retailer. Learn more at atcoenergy.com. 
Huck goes over to the right wing in the Arizona zone, and on the right side, it was Kane. It goes to the blue line, and Bouchard will keep it in. It's it around on the left wing board. Timon into the corner for Drysidle. Just get double teamed. Moser will get it high in the air and out. Doan from McBain and Michelli. 520. That was the goal to get things started here as Arizona leads. Dry sidle on the right wing. Into the right wing corner of Coyote. Got two Jericho. broken sticks here. Huck rims around to the right for Dry Sidle. Dry Sidle back to the blue line to Bouchard. He'll get it across to Nugent Hopkins. He'll shoot. Glove save made by Vamelka. Hard shot by Nugent Hopkins. And Vamelka kept it out. Minute 10 to go here in the Edmonton power play. Yeah, Vamelka catches with his right hand. That's something to think about. You were a left-handed catching goalie, right? That is correct. And you didn't catch enough? Not nearly. Good enough to play in the Western no. League. That's... Face off to the right of Amelka. He had 20 saves and a 5-0 loss at Seattle on Tuesday. That was his last game. Connor Ingram, he played Wednesday in Vancouver. Oh. Strop the pucks here, boys. <laughs> well, Nugent Hopkins is going to take this draw now against Cooley. And the puck top of the circle, Kerfoot there for the Coyotes. He'll bring it down the right wing, into the Oiler end, across to Cooley, just missed him. Otherwise, he was all alone with Calvin Picker. Puck comes out to center ice, Kerfoot back into his own end. Moser over to Jersey, up the right wing to Kerfoot. He's got Cooley with him, comes down the right wing, across to Cooley. Great save made by Pickard, sliding across. And out to center ice is Dreisaitl. Now to Nugent Hopkins, to Kane. His shot, and it was off his stick and went over into the right wing corner. An opportunity for Dreisaitl, but he missed it as it came across. Now he has it, no right wing. Along the end boards, Hyman gets it free to dry side on the Nugent Hopkins to the blue line, Bouchard, left side to Kane, cross ice pass, that hits a leg, goes to the line, and Bouchard could not keep it in. It's offside against Edmonton. one nothing Coyotes, 7.50 gone here in the first. Big stop by Calvin Pickard on a shorthanded chance for Arizona. Yeah, he fought that one off, but not the performance in terms of the level and gave him and Edmonton had against the Vegas Golden Knights on the opening shift. They've been a little loose and Vegas you know that was a big game for both teams and the owners need to ratchet up the intensity here but tonight Cam. Behind the Edmonton net, Stetcher to Nurse. Now Nurse bringing it out to center ice. Now to Perry on the right wing is shot. Wider than it. Penalty is done. Nurse trying to keep it in on the left wing, but Gunther got it out. Gave it to Kraus. Kraus into the Euler end on the left side. Edmonton 0 for 1 on the power play. Rims. It goes into the right corner. Dersey up against the board. Schmaltz is in there too for Arizona. Dersey on the right wing. We'll get the puck to the middle. Give it to Keller. Now on the right to Dersey. In behind the net. Just past Schmaltz. Keller has to come down the left side. And he'll come out of the left wing corner from the angle. The shot off of Vogel. Comes back to the right wing point. Dersey, left wing. Just off the stick of Keller. Puck back to the blue line. Schmaltz on the right to Dersey. Pulling it to the middle. His backhand pass in behind Keller. To the blue line. Moser. To Schmaltz on the right to Jersey. He's in the right wing corner. It's 1-0 Coyotes here in the first. 10.50 to go in the opening period. Jersey right wing corner. To Keller. To Schmaltz. To Moser. To Schmaltz. Now to Keller. To Schmaltz. To Keller. All the way across the blue line. It goes over to the left wow. side. And O'Brien kept it in. Still alive for the Coyotes. Schmaltz up to the blue. Top of the circle to Keller. Gets forced out of the zone by Fogel. Keller at center ice. Off the left wing to Schmaltz. Now to Keller. He'll just dump it and go off for a change. Doan. The right wing boards to McBain. Goes to the right corner of the Edmonton end. Runs into Stetcher. Stetcher, the former Arizona Coyote. Puck flipped out. Chonik 
Kessel ring. It goes off a stick and out of play. With 9.59 to go here in the first period, Arizona leading Edmonton by a score of 1-0. We'll be right back from Rogers Place. It's four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. Hey, Paul Brandt here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm proud to call myself an Albertan. You know, after years of touring this great province in my Ford F-150, I've learned the value of driving a tough, capable, smart truck. Whether you're working for the weekend or long hauling it like I am, there's an F-150 for every Albertan with plenty of options to choose from, like available pro power on board. So if you're looking for a new truck, stop by your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. It takes some courage to get out there and travel. You never know if your bags might mysteriously vanish. Or if that guacamole is going to come back to haunt you. Or if the plane just never takes off in the first place. But through it all, you have a partner in Alberta Blue Cross. Our travel insurance lets you take the security of home with you, wherever you go. Whatever life brings, be ready for it. Find travel insurance today at ab.bluecross.ca. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. one nothing. Arizona leading Edmonton here in the first period. 9.59 to go. Tonight's caring for Oil Country 50-50 in support of the University of Alberta Hospital Foundation, advancing patient care, research, and innovation at the University of Alberta Hospital, the Mazankowski Alberta Heart Institute, and the K. Edmonton Clinic. Winners being outplayed. They're outshot 6-2 here halfway through the first period despite having the only power play. Arizona's been skating. Almost like a team that was told before the game, hey, we're going to Salt Lake right after the game on Wednesday night against Edmonton. Shot from the high slot, wide of the net, in front of the goal. The shot by Kane goes off the post. Wide what a open. chance for Kane. Wide open net. <laughs> Comes up to the blue line, kept in by Fogel, but he put it over the glass, goes out of play. Elliot Friedman yes, just uh, tweeting so something gonna, out. Yes, I'll get to the specifics. So Elliot tweeting out, there's word tonight that the Arizona players were informed in a meeting that they are going to go to Utah. Players and staff may be headed to Salt Lake City after Wednesday night's game against Edmonton to check out the facilities in the city. There's still work to do, but timing obviously is fluid, but players were told of the penny move, and there will be an opportunity to see the new potential surroundings. That from Elliot Friedman, who, as you know, does Oilers now. And I did talk to Bill Armstrong before the game to GM. We talked about his prospects. It wasn't appropriate at this time to discuss what was going on on the other front. Wide open net for Kane. It should be a 1-1 game. Mark back to the point. Bouchard will shoot it. Glove save made by Famelka. He's going to hold on to that. Nine and a half to go in the first. one nothing. Arizona leads. Vander Kane hitting the post. Good opportunity for Edmonton. Ace off to the right of Famelka. Left side draw, so it's going to be Janmark. And he won it too clean. Yeah, won it so good it went right out of the zone. Brown back into his own end, over to Evan Bouchard. Bouchard fourth in defenseman scoring with 79 points. Leave the puck to Yanmar, comes up the right wing. Into the Arizona end to the right wing corner. Centering pass goes through the slot. In from the left point, Ekholm was able to keep it in. Polyachonik got it up the boards. That doesn't get out. Kept in by Bouchard. It'll go to Brown, right wing corner. Up to Kraus, just over the blue line and out. Kolya Chonik with it in his own end. Up the left wing, his pass misses Kraus. At home to Bouchard. And a wait right between the hash marks and the oiler end. Now to dry side, will bring it up the left wing. Get over center ice, shoot it in. The milk out of his net, he at least slowed it up. Nugent Hopkins pokes it in behind the goal. Yannick on the right wing, off the right wing boards, off of Nurse and out. Puck in the neutral zone. Kirkconi over to the left wing. Dump it in behind the Edmonton net. 
Here's O'Brien on the end boards. 1-0 Coyotes were in the first period. Doan the goal scorer. O'Brien back to the blue line. Kept in. On the right wing point. And that goes off a stick after Dersey sailed it over the glass. Hit an Oilers stick on the way out. 8-10 to go in the first. 1-0 Arizona leads. off to the left of Pickard. So the line of McLeod and Holloway and Perry had a great game against Vegas. They had a great game against McLeod and Perry had a real good game with Fogel against Colorado, then a drop-off against Calgary. Great game against Vegas, and so far drop-off tonight. They're going to get going, moving their feet. Mark flipped out, down the ice, icing against the Oilers. Oilers got Vancouver here tomorrow. San Jose Monday closes out the home stretch of the regular season. And they're on the road in Arizona and Denver to finish off the regular season. Face off to the right of Pickard. 33 saves in that 4 2 win in Calgary on Saturday night. Puck on the left. That was his last game. Puck on the left wing side. Schmaltz pinned up against the boards. Perry's able to get it out. Give it to McLeod. Comes into Arizona territory, pass to the middle, goes off of Alamaki, right to Holloway on the right wing, back to the blue line. Darren Age shot block. Here's Holloway. Oh, he just ripped it wide of the net. May have caught the arm of Amelka, but it's out to center. Buck brought in by Schmaltz on the right wing. It's two point blank looks. Look out. To Keller to Schmaltz, back to the left wing point. Polyachonic got the puck to the right to Brown. Now off the right side. Keller will shoot off the arm of Pickard. Julia Chonick put it behind the net in front to Keller. Oh, what a glove save made by Pickard. What a chance for the Coyotes. And Pickard snares it out of the air and holds on to it. Well, this line is leaking chances against. They got to pull it together here. It's a wide oh. open seam. Great save by Pickard. He pulled that one out of the net from Clayton Keller, who's got goal scoring ability. 33 on the air. Sitting at uh, 37 and 33 goals the last two seasons, so he can put it in the net. Oilers need to dig in a bit here. That was a great stop by Calvin Pickard. That one and the one shorthanded where he had the two-pad jammer coming across. Puck back to the point. Moser over to Durs. He'll snap towards and it was tipped off the outside of it. Michelli in the right wing corner. Trying to get it to Doan. Doan forced to the right wing. Out to Michelli. Michelli right side. To Doan on the point is Shaw. And that one blocked in front of the net. Here's Michelli right side. And he put it off the outside of the post. He'll center it. Played towards the net by Doan. And off the pad of Pickard. It's in behind the net. On the left wing point. Moser keeps it in. Gives it to Michelli. Up to the blue line. Into the right wing corner to McBain. Goes in behind the goal. Bouchard there for Edmondson. But Doan is on him. Can't get it out. Doan to McBain. McBain got it to the corner. Henrique will get it behind the net for Eckholm. Rims on the right. Moser in from the left wing point. Was able to keep it in. Puck goes to McBain. Over to Dersey. Over to the left wing. There's nobody there for the Coyotes. And Bouchard will just skip it out. Wow. Oh, what this is line's hemmed in. Yeah, and these guys were not very good against Vegas. They were the weakest of the lines against Vegas. And they need more out of Adam Henrique, Evander Kane, and Warren Fogel right now. one nothing Coyotes here in the first. Kraus into the Oilers' zone left side. Gave it to Cooley to Kraus. Goes in behind the net, broken up by Stetcher. Right wing to Brown. He'll bring it to center. Over center, he'll shoot it in. Jan marks in on the four check. Puck in behind the net. Brown will wrap it around. The save made by Vamelka. And up the middle, it's Cooley able to get it out. Dodges the hit from Nurse. Brought in by Brown down the left wing. His shot. And that one's blocked. Goes over to the left side. Krause will get it out for Arizona. Castle ring. Take it back into his own and slow it up. Coyotes make some changes. 5.15 to go in the first. one nothing. Arizona. Well, they've all played Edmonton. They're out shooting them 9-5 yeah. here. Up the right wing. Brown will get to center. He'll dump it in for the Coyotes. 
Cleared off the boards and up to dry settle now in center to Nugent Hopkins. A roll it into the Arizona end. To the end boards is dry saddle takes it left side to the point. It's shot by Kulak. Doesn't get through. Blocked in front of the net by Kerfoot up the left side to Keller. Get it into the Oiler end. He'll dump it in behind the net. Kerfoot chops at it. Tries to sweep it in front of the net. It won't get through. Keller on the end boards. Rims on the right. Dursey on the right point. Through the middle. Gave it away to dry saddle. Gets it out on the backhand. Schmaltz into his own end. Cross to Moser. Now to Dursey in the middle. Up the right wing. Off of O'Brien. It goes deep into the Oilers zone. Rimmed up the right wing by Kulak. O'Brien's going to keep it in. Marconi on the right wing. Broken up by McLeod. It'll get to the blue line. And the left side. Shot by Valamaki. Way wide. Gets into the slot. There's Nugent Hopkins. And he'll get it out through the middle just off of McLeod. Comes right back to Nugent Hopkins. He's trying to go off for a change. And the puck hits center ice to McLeod. In over the line. Drops to Holloway. He got hit coming across the middle. Puck gets flipped out down into the Oilers zone. Michelli into the left wing corner. 3.40 to go in the first period. 1-0. Coyotes lead on a goal by Doan. Ekholm over to Holloway. Now to McLeod, but it went off his stick. McLeod will get it back. They'll be able to shoot it into the Arizona end. Polyachonik got to the right wing corner. Bounces off a hit. Got it to the blue line. Brought right back in by Fogel, and it's offside against the Oilers. We're going to take a break. 3.17 to go in the first. Coyotes leading Edmonton 1-0 from Rogers Place. It's Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. NHL action is heating up with an ultra cool game day experience at the Canadian Ice House. Free game with us for great food and drink with an amazing wall of sight and sound. Hands down the most TVs to catch all the hits, the goals, and the game day glory. Enjoy a dollar off tankards of Coors Light and Molson Canadian. Every Oilers game day where NHL hockey lives at the Canadian Ice House. MIC is a leader in medical imaging and the official medical imaging provider to the Edmonton Oilers. Make MIC your choice. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, the game doesn't stop for injury. MIC's sports medicine imaging specialists can help you get back in the game with a timely and expert diagnosis. Go where the pros go. For a location near you, visit MIC.ca. Kemco is building industry across Canada, and now they're on the lookout for civil and electrical project managers, estimators, and superintendents to join their dedicated team. Why Kemco? Because Kemco cares. They put people first, offering top-tier compensation packages and an unwavering commitment to safety. At Kemco, safety isn't just a priority. It's everybody's business. Ready to be part of a team that truly values you? Visit Kemco.com slash careers today. All games, all all seasons. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Cam Moon and Bob Stoffer. We are here in the Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth. Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and home payments, no interest for one year. Josh Doan, the goal scorer, came 520 into the period. 1-0 Arizona leads. We have 317 to go here in the first. And the Oilers haven't capitalized on a couple point-blank looks in this game. Evander Kane hit in the post. Dylan Holloway with a wide open chance, but there's been a couple good opportunities the other way. Arizona's been the better team. They've been quicker on pucks. The Oilers have been a little sleepy here in the first period, and that's part of the reason why they're being outshot. 9-6 and down 1-0 with 317 left. Face off just outside the Coyote blue line. Henrique wins the draw. Stetcher wire it in. Brown got it to the end boards. And it- over to the right side. Fogel's pass to the point off the stick of Kraus. Stetcher threw it right back in. Brown with it, right wing corner. Got it up the right wing, down the ice. That'll be icing against Arizona. Yeah, Coyotes have had a lot of zone time in that oiler end. Especially against the McLeod, Holloway, and Perry group. Yep. Well, if you recall, that game February 19th in Arizona was a bit of a slow start for the Oilers, too. Edmonton has won seven straight. Nice to 
And they've been pretty good here in home ice. They don't want to be yes. 10 0 1 in their last 11 at home. Puck brought in. Quick shot by Gunther and the save made by Pickard. Gunther through the middle. Just let that go with that quick release that he has. Calvin Pickard made the save and held on to it. You know what, Cam? I'm watching this and I'm wondering whether or not I put Nugent Hopkins between Kane and Fogel and move Henrique on left wing with Dry Settle and I'm not liking what I'm seeing out of either of those two lines. 5 8 5. Schmaltz wins the draw, but it goes back, but it went right onto the stick of Drysaddle, and he'll skate into the Arizona end on the left wing. Got dumped down, puck near the top of the circle. It goes to Eckholm, across to Bouchard. He'll walk in, pass to the side of the net, oh, off the pad of Emelka. That's three open nets in this game they Nugent missed. Nugent Hopkins, what a Go. chance. Cross ice pass that goes off of Bouchard, not a play. It's going to be a penalty on Bouchard. He put it he deflected it up and over the glass. It's going to be a penalty. They're discussing it right now. Evan makes the perfect play, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins double clutches the puck. Edmonton minor penalty to number two. Two minutes. Play again. Edmonton about to be shorthanded. Penalty kill brought to you by I'm Nap not, Auto Parts. I'm not quite sure how Nugent didn't score there. No, I don't know. All right, so Arizona's power play is currently 15th in the league at 21.8%, so it's dangerous. The Oilers penalty killing 16th at 79.4, but 29th since 29th since the uh, All-Star break. Pass was off his skate. I just saw the replay. Oh. Puck back to the point, walking in with it to the middle. Keller will shoot it, and that one's blocked. Puck goes into the right corner. Schmaltz up the boards to Keller. He's on the right wing point. In behind the net to Kerfoot. Got it to the left side to Gunther. Give it to Schmaltz, to Gunther, to the blue line. Jersey, his shot off his stick goes to the left side. There is Ekholm to get it down the ice. So a little bit of a change there. They want to look at uh, Henrique with Derek, or with uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Two left-handed shots to start the PK. They lost the draw. Arizona got a couple of looks. 1-0 Arizona leads. Minute 40 to go here in the first period. Broken up by Connor Brown inside the blue line. He gets it out. Jersey in his own end for the Coyotes. Now to Gunther. Gunther will weave his way into the Oilers zone. Left wing to Keller. Now to Gunther. He's in the left wing corner. Cross to Schmaltz. Right side. Back to the blue line to Jersey. Jersey to Schmaltz to Jersey. Almost lost it. Keeps it in. Left wing to Gunther. Back to Jersey. Now on the right wing to Keller. Keller side of the net out to Schmaltz. Couldn't get a shot through. And the puck cleared out by Yanmark last minute here in the first period. Got to survive this period only down 1 0. Has a bit a good one, though they've missed chances themselves. Got to get out of this period only down a goal. Jersey to center ice. That uh, Logan Cooley will bring the puck in, go across to Kraus on the left side. To the blue line to Jersey. Down the left wing, Michelli, cross ice. One timer on the save by Pickard. Coming across as Cooley had the opportunity off the right side. He didn't get all of it. If that was Dylan Gunther. That would have been in oh, the next. Great stop by Pickard sliding across. 34 seconds to go in the first period. Shot it back into him. Yeah, he did. If he one times that clean, it's in the net. Pace off to the left of Calvin Pickard. And Cooley's more of a playmaker. Gunther's the guy that's got the trick. Oh, he's got the shot. We saw it for years with the Oil Kings as Kulak will blast it down the ice. And Melk will set it in behind the net. Up the right wing is Cooley. Penalty now over. Arizona's 0 for 1 on the power play. Puck dumped in by Michelli. Nugent Hopkins will get it out. Left side to Henrique. Back to Nugent Hopkins. Comes in. He'll shoot. That's off the stick of Valimaki. It goes out of play. Ten seconds to go here in the first. The Oilers survived the shorthanded situation. 
Face off to the right of Pamelka. Dry Saddle to take the face off. Up against Jack McBain. 29th in the league in face-offs, Arizona, but the Orders haven't done a great job in this first period in the circle. McBain, it's it back to Brown. Brown up the right wing, bounces the puck out. Richard will take it back into his own end. First period will come to a close. Oilers down 1-0 after 20 minutes. Yeah, both teams had some clean looks to the net that didn't result in goals, whether they be saves or posts or what have yep. you. But that isn't uh, a period that we've seen at home from the Oilers in a little while. No, but maybe it's a little predictable. Yep. The last two home games, you played Colorado and Vegas, two higher-end teams that you know you're going to have to potentially beat to, to get out of the Western Conference and a sleepy performance from Edmonton, Arizona on a day in which, again, Elliot Friedman reporting the players were informed by Bill Armstrong the team will be in Salt Lake next season. Um, you know, Arizona's they were better than Edmonton in the first period. They were quick on yep. the Oilers are going to need to elevate the level of their performance from period number two. That's where we are after 20 minutes. Josh Doan, the goal scorer from McBain and Michelli at 520. That's been it. one nothing. Coyotes lead the Oilers after 20 minutes. Reed Wilkins and Rob Brown, they've got the intermission for you when we come back. From Rogers Place, it's Ford Dealers, NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall from house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations from your favorite fuss shop to your local indian spot from noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars there's a molson with your name on it canadian ultra xl molson everyone in must be legal drinking age Stay connected with your community and enjoy the latest updates and exclusive access to concerts and events by becoming a 630 Chad Insider. Don't miss out on a single moment. Sign up now at 630Chad.com and click on Chad Insider Newsletter to become a vital part of Edmonton's premier news and talk community. 630 Chad, Edmonton's news, today's talk. Where Edmonton stays informed and entertained. Today and every day. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. William Chonick put it behind the net in front to Keller. Oh, what a glove save made by Pickard. What a chance for the Coyotes. And Pickard snares it out of the air and holds on to it. That is one of the 10 saves or there's goaltender Calvin Pickard made in the first period. And it's also your look into the highlight zone for Century Casinos. All in all games all season. Century Casinos, three great locations, Edmonton, St. Albert, and next to the Edmonton International Airport, Josh Doan scoring for Arizona 520 into the game. So they have a one nothing lead. On the Oilers, as Rob Brown joins me at the intermission for end of the row flooring centers, let's get flooring. Well, I, I, Rob, I think full marks to the Coyotes for that uh, for that lead. Uh, I thought the harder working team, the sharper team, and uh, they were better than Edmonton in that period. Well, and the one word that you can throw in there too, the one that played with more desperation. As how many times did you see a, a Coyote player diving on the ice, trying to keep a play alive, trying to keep a puck alive? Uh, they were ferocious in the offensive zone, just uh, everywhere. And they didn't give the Oilers any opportunities to clear the puck. The Oilers were sloppy and a couple lazy plays. I mean, there's a play, the Coyotes, which I, uh, the one shift was shocking, where the Coyotes moved around like they were the Harlem Globetrotters. The, the Oilers had no answer. And then finally, Evan Bouchard got the puck, and he just kind of just flipped it to the middle. And this the next wave of Coyotes came in there. So a little bit of a... Uh, a lazy play on that one that allowed the Coyotes to continue going forward. The the desperation and the energy was on the side of the Coyotes. They play loose, though, and they will give up good scoring chances against. So as much as the Coyotes were the better team, the Edmonton Oilers could have had four goals in that period. 
Uh, true. Evander yeah. Kane had two. Did he hit the post he twice? He hit the post on yes. the first one, hit the crossbar on the second one. So he had right. two open nets. He missed both those. Evan Bouchard, if he hits Nugent Hopkins' stick, it's a goal. He hit him in the feet, and Evan shoots hard, and he passes hard. So when he hit him in the foot, uh, Nugent wasn't able to kick it up into his stick to be able to get it through. And there was one earlier in the period, too, where the others had a golden scoring opportunity. So they could have had four goals, but the, the others were sloppy in their own zone. They didn't have... This was a period where the emotion wasn't there for the Oilers. You know, they had it against Vegas and against Colorado and L.A. when they played. Uh, this is a step down, and I think it showed in the first 20 minutes. The Oilers played good enough in that period to keep it close and probably should have a goal on the board. But this was not the type of game that we've seen from the Edmonton Oilers on home ice for quite a while. Yeah, well, I thought Pickard played well again. The goal they scored... He got across to stop a one-timer yeah. initially. Okay, the rebound goes into the high slot, but you're, you're not going to perfectly control it. And sometimes they try to kick it further away from the net, and it went right to Doan. It was just uh, uh, the back checkers didn't get the right men. Yeah. Um, they, the Oilers had players back, but if you watch from the uh, on the video of it, you'll see the Oilers players turning away from the net. The only one that went towards the net was Doan. He picked up the puck and scored. Uh, the Coyotes... And this is something that is the most shocking of that period was the Oilers were on a power play, mm -hmm. and the Coyotes actually played keep away for about 20 seconds where they just put four guys in four different spots, and they passed the puck around and then created two great scoring chances off of that. So um, <laughs> you, you expect periods like this. Uh, you... It, where we are here in the season, the team they're playing against, having come off a bunch of emotional wins. Uh, the Oilers goaltending and Kelvin Pickard played good, very good in that first period that allows this Oilers team to just be down one after 20. I would expect you'll see a much more emotionally engaged Oilers team through the final 40 minutes. Well, and I was already thinking, okay, which way is this going to go? Is this going to just be a lackluster game the Oilers lose, or is this going to be a game they win? And we're talking about, well, they, they didn't play well in the first, but they limited the damage, which good teams often do. So we'll see. But definitely the Oilers got to get it going a little bit. Uh, shot clock updated to read 11-6 in favor of Arizona. Elliot Friedman posting about 40 minutes ago, Rob, there's word tonight the Arizona Coyotes players were informed in a meeting they are going to Utah. Now, listen to this one, Rob. Players and staff may be headed to Salt Lake City right after Wednesday's game to check out the facilities and the city. I did. I read that one as well. I'm oh, I guess they're, uh, it's not just a rumor and it's not just maybe. It sounds a little more set in stone as the plane tickets have been bought and the players are going down to see their new homes uh it's funny one of the things that i got my brother sent me a text there's a lot of nhl players right now upset because no one ever had phoenix on their no trade list well now phoenix is salt lake <laughs> maybe there's some players that don't want to well, go there point, as much yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah it, it, it's weird uh, maybe maybe now that they've been told uh, they played a little freer in that period because there was always an unknown and especially for the guys that have families it's like you, every day you go home are we, are we staying here next year i don't know don't know what's going on but today maybe there was a little more uh assurances or maybe a little more assertiveness okay this is what's happening rest you just go out and play hockey because now, now we know what's going on there's no it's not up in the air anymore we're not just guessing anymore so because uh, i thought the arizona coyotes in that period i thought they were very good yeah very good the energy was great and the Edmonton Oilers are going to have to match here going forward because uh, the Oilers do want to have an opportunity to win home ice advantage in the first two rounds. Losing today's game against the Arizona Coyotes will put a huge dent into that. I know this is a bit of a what if, so you can laugh at me. I, I never <laughs> will laugh at you. With you. With but what you. if the Arizona Coyotes were a playoff team? Oh, that's like what if they were in the Oilers spot? Yep. <laughs> well, no, it's funny. I, I played in junior for the Kamloops Junior Oilers. And we won the league championship, and the day before we flew to the Memorial Cup, we were sold by the, or the, the Edmonton Oilers said they were selling right. us. We found out, like, the day before we were going to Memorial Cup, because so we had no idea if we were going to be in Kamloops the next year or anything. I know that's just junior, but we were a bunch of 15 to 20-year-old kids, didn't have any idea. It, it, and that's what I tried to say with Bob before the game. This, these, it doesn't affect the Arizona Coyote, Coyotes in the standings because they're not making the playoffs. But if the Coyotes are told and this affects their game, mm -hmm. it affects the standings because they're playing against the Oilers who are involved in a playoff race. They're playing against 
Uh, I've, whoever they got, well, they have two games against the Oilers. They've got they had a game against Vancouver. Uh, these are there are playoff implications still involved with games that involve Arizona. So, but going forward, yeah, what if Arizona was involved in a, a playoff race and? Well, you saw how the fans are reacting to the Oakland A's not being there next year. Yeah, they have not been very point. happy with their 4,000 people for their home opener. So uh, it, it's a weird situation. I'm sure the players right now just want the season to be over with and that they can start concentrating on what happens next year. Yeah, the Coyotes are in Calgary on Sunday, and then they host the Oilers on Wednesday. So that's their final game, second last game for the Oilers. So I guess the trivia question will be, against what team did the Arizona Coyotes play their final game? <laughs> well, well, be Edmonton, barring some sort of dramatic change in everything that's going on. And here. the one thing you don't want to be the answer to the trivia question, who who was yeah, the, last, who the last win for <laughs> the Arizona right. Coyotes against? You do not want to be the answer to that one. Yeah, well, good period for uh, the Oilers. Uh, Doan scoring, not Shane. <laughs> nope, son. but his kid. Well, he got two goals in his first game, remember? A couple Actually, weeks think, ago, that was amazing. I think I just looked at his stats. I think he's up. He's only played nine That's games. That's his fourth goal already. Yeah, he's got nine games on the season, four goals, seven the, points in nine games. To me, this is kind of a team to watch. Well, you know, like there's there's some holes, obviously, if you're you're where they are in the standings, but they they got some talent. Well, their their top two lines, which are Kel, uh, Keller, Kerfoot, Schmaltz, Genter, Cooley, Laus, they're they're 29 or younger. Most of them are 26, 27. Logan Cooley, number 92, very nice. He might young have been player. the best player in that. He's period. only 19 yeah, he years really old. Good very good yeah. player. That Michelli is only 23. McBain 24. Doan 22. This is a very very young team. Uh, well, I did read one article. I know that you talked about the article that Elliot Friedman went, and I think he mentioned in it too that they will be very, very aggressive in the off season with free agents. They've got an ownership that yep. wants to make a splash in Salt Lake. They've got a lot of nice young hockey players. If you can surround them with some veterans that uh, experienced guys that can come in and help this team push it forward, they do have the makings of a good team. Um, uh, maybe one year down the road, yep. two years, but I'm sure Salt Lake would like to have a good first season. Arizona won, Edmonton nothing after the first Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Live sky high with remarkable units for rent and for sale at Sky Signature Suites. Currently offering amazing incentives on one- and two-bedroom rentals, featuring designer finishes, resort-like amenities, and breathtaking views. All of this and more within the heart of Ice District, Edmonton's best address for shopping, dining, entertainment, and fun. Visit SkySignatureSuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. Experience the exciting casino action at three Century Casino locations. Edmonton, St. Albert, and next to the Edmonton Airport. Dine at one of their amazing restaurants featuring daily specials. Check out the best in live entertainment at any amazing location. Plus, you can always enjoy a great selection of casino gaming options. Or try your luck at off-track betting. And now you can feel the thrill of live horse racing at Century Mile Racetrack. Century Casino has it all. Come for the action. Stay for the fun. With Global News, I'm Thomas Dias. Edmonton police are hoping you can help identify three suspects caught on surveillance video ripping down a pride flag attached to the front of the Evolution Wonder Lounge downtown. You'll find a video in a story at 630chad.com with the Hate Crimes Unit investigating. Police raids have left four people who run convenience stores along Alberta Avenue in northeast Edmonton charged with selling contraband tobacco products, including 27 grand worth of cigarettes, cigars, and loose tobacco. And Mayor Amarjeet Sohi is blaming the recommendation of an 8.7% hike in property tax following the spring adjustment on services being underfunded in the past. For example, previous council...
of funny. Uh, about a week and a half ago, the sky was falling because we lost five nothing to Dallas, and they, <laughs> you guys roll off uh, three pretty good. I guess it just proves that this team knows how to play and knows how consistent. They can be. Yeah, for sure. I think that's. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's why it's disappointing when you have a game like that because. Um, we know uh, what we're capable of and uh, the way that we can play. So when you have a, a sinker like that, um, like we did against Dallas, it's uh, it's it's tough. But I think it's uh, it's about uh, it's a long season. I mean, things like that happen, and uh, the way that you respond uh, is the important part. And um, I, I think since then we've done done a pretty good job. And uh, obviously the other night was uh, uh, a really good full sixty for us, and uh, we want to keep building on that. Five games in seven days to finish it off. Like you guys are making up all your games in hand here, right at the end, and there are still goals to play for in the standings. So, what's the balance between energy and, and going for as many points as possible? Yeah, I mean, we're obviously you don't uh, hold anything back. You, you want to push them uh, as much as you can. I don't know why we're playing seven and five to finish, but I mean, I guess that's the way it, it worked out for us this year for some reason. But. Uh, it's, it's definitely uh, a lot uh, right before going into the playoffs, but I mean, at this point, um, uh, you've played 75, 76 games, so I mean, you're in uh, you're in good shape and can handle it for sure. Um, but no, I mean, it's not. You don't want to hold anything back. Uh, we're still looking to, to improve our game and, uh, and push for points here. There haven't been too many times in the past where you have been on the power play without Connor. What's what was it like being on a power play without him there? Yeah, obviously, um, well, he's a big, uh, makes a big impact five on five and power play. Um, uh, on the power play, he just he creates so many plays that it's it's definitely a little uh, different of a look. Uh, probably kind of similar to five on five. You simplify it a little bit, but um, I mean, the rest of us have uh, played so much together in the past that uh, the chemistry's still there and and our, the ability to to be able to score is still there. So. Uh, it definitely changes things. Um, bringing the puck into the zone, he's he's probably the best in the league at that. Uh, with his speed, pushing guys back, and uh, then, like I said, just creating stuff in zone. So, I mean, we we can be patient with it, but uh, trust that we can get get the job done. So, Ryan, a little surreal for you. Uh, you know, when you broke in all those years ago, and it's your, we know it's your birthday today, but just you guys you used to have like the youngest team in the league almost every year. Now you have the most thirty-year-old players in the entire National Hockey League on your team. Like, it's quite a a different thing is that you just sort of look back and go, "Wow, we're you know we're at a different place with our club and the team and all that kind of dynamic." Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, how much it's changed is is pretty crazy. I mean, I know I've been here a long time, so there's going to be changes. But um, like you said, from my first few years, we we're always the young team in the league, and uh, and now that's changed. Where um, uh, I think. I think are we the average age oldest yeah. now? Yeah, so definitely a, a big change. But I mean, we have a lot of uh, a lot of guys who know how to get the job done and uh, know what it takes to to win. And uh, I think that's so important uh, at the stage that we're at right now. Can you speak to what Corey Perry has brought because there's a, a very different dynamic that he's I think helping you guys. Yeah, I, I mean he's uh, he knows how to win. He knows how to uh, play those tough games. I mean he's he's been to the final uh, uh, multiple times I mean uh, to be able to do that um, obviously you're doing something right and uh, his competitiveness has been something that's uh, I think been great for our group um, he, he wants to he wants to win let's clear water vodka where the spirit of the game meets true Alberta quality must be 18 plus please drink responsibly <laughs> You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. Cam Moon and Bob Stoffer. we're here at Rogers Place. one nothing Coyotes lead, getting ready for the second period of play. The Caring for Oil Country 50-50 is a special offer for you. For every day you purchase $100 of 50-50 tickets, you receive $25 for Boston Pizza and a $25 sports bet for Play Alberta. Buy your tickets now at EdmontonOilers.com slash 50-50. Total jackpot right now, over $575,000. We've dropped the puck underway here in the second as Bouchard smacks it right up the middle. Goes off of Kerfoot. Now he'll bring it into the Oilers zone. Roll it into the corner. Go after it himself. Get the puck over to the boards. Puck 
goes off wow. of Bouchard, almost lost that thing to Keller, and the puck up against just, the boards. Just a sloppy start for Everton. Three chance. Keller Looker. out to Schmaltz, his shot and a save made by Pickard. It hit him in the left shoulder, and Drysaddle brings it out through the middle. Right wing to Hyman, in over the line, goes behind the net, across to Nugent Hopkins. He was tied up. Ekholm in from the left wing point to keep it in for the Oilers. Behind the goal to Drysaddle. Slides over to the left side. Gets it out to Nugent Hopkins. He'll rip a shot. And that one goes just off of Hyman and wide. Puck in the left wing corner. And Drysaddle took a solid hit there from Kesselring. And the puck played into the Oiler end. Here's Schmaltz on the right side. His shot off the arm of Pickard. Puck back to the left side. Keller will let it go. Save made by Pickard. Nugent Hopkins bringing it out. Just over a minute gone here in the second. 1-0 Arizona leads. Nugent Hopkins will dump it in. Moser up the right wing to Dersey. Now to center to Gunther. On the right wing for Cooley. Goes in behind the Euler goal. Now over to the left side. Cooley stops. Back to the point. The shot and the save made by Pickard as Moser let it go off the left wing point. Pickard was able to snag that thing out of the air. Well, I thought when you cross-check somebody into the boards from behind in this league, there was a new standard that was going to get deployed this year. Kesselring with a real hard finish on Leon Dreisel. I think everybody in the building was shocked that wasn't a penalty. Nurse on the left wing in his own end to Kane. We get the puck up the left side to Henry. Comes into the Arizona and to the right. And the shot by Fogel. Save by Malka. And the puck goes over to the left wing. Nurse will keep it in on the point now to Kane. Swings it around to the right side. Stetcher back behind the goal to Kane. He'll back in in front of the net. Here's Henry. Scores! Adam Henry shovels it home right in front of the net. This game's tied at one. Well, that's the fifth goal for Adam Henry with the Edmonton Oilers since coming over in the trade from the Anaheim Ducks and his 23rd goal on the season. And four of the five have been scored from right there, right in front of the net. Kane banks one in front. Henrik finds the loose change. We're tied 1-1. Minute 49 into the second period. As Adam Henrik gets it on the backhand. It goes five hole on Vimelka. And Edmonton has tied things up. Darnay will shoot the puck in. That goes off of Koli to Chornik and the assists. Well, it would be nice if the Oilers could get Evander Kane going a bit. Did break through for a couple goals the other night. Against the Colorado Avalanche. Face off will be to Vanelka's right. Cloud taking the draw for the Oilers, and he'll win it to the left wing point. Bouchard will shoot it. That one hit traffic in front of the net, and it is cleared out. Bouchard after oh. it. He's going to lose the puck to Doan. Unreal. Right off the referee's yep. skate. He, he couldn't have picked Evan Bouchard quicker than that. Look out. Bouchard's able that to get it out. Many. That should have been too many men. Played the puck. It's inside the Arizona end. Up the right wing, Valamaki. Corey Perry lost the skate plate. Camp, yeah, he's oh, off. He had to get to the bench. Puck goes in behind the goal. 
Holloway for Edmonton. Rims on the left. Come up to the blue line, and Holloway's able to get it out. He'll skate through the middle. Now on the right wing for Hyman. His shot, and he can't get it through. Puck goes to Ekholm. Gets to the middle, and his shot gets blocked. It comes back to him. To Hyman in the left wing corner. We're tied at one. We're three and a half into the second period as the Oilers host the Arizona Coyotes. Puck's still tied up in that corner as Hyman is up against the boards. Dug out by Valimaki, then lost it to Nugent Hopkins. To the point for Nurse on the right. To Nugent Hopkins on the right wing boards, now to Dreisaitl. He'll skate up to the blue line, over to Nugent Hopkins. He'll walk in, he'll shoot it! Now one goes over the net, off the arm of Amelka, but the puck on the right wing point, and it's Dreisaitl. To Nugent Hopkins on the blue line. To Nurse, to Nugent Hopkins, he's on the right point. To try saddle on the right wing, turns it towards the boards, goes to the corner, dry saddle to the middle, and it comes back to the blue line. Ekholm couldn't keep it in, it does come out. Nurse to Matias Ekholm, up the left wing to Nugent Hopkins, he'll bring it in. He'll pull to the middle, now to Nurse on the left wing point. It's it down the left side, Valimaki will try to clear. Finds Keller up the left wing to Schmaltz. Off the boards and in. Kerfoot will get to it. Left wing corner in the Edmonton zone. Kerfoot to Schmaltz. Now to Keller off the right side. To the blue line. Faking it was Jersey. Holds on to Keller. His one-timer and the save made by Pickard. He'll hold on to it. Four minutes, 47 seconds gone here in the second period. Oilers and Coyotes are tied at one. Yeah, sometimes, you know, what we saw the other night against Vegas and even against Colorado in the 6-2 win is Edmonton put box to the net. They haven't done that in this game. Got nine shots on goal, first 24 minutes of this game. The Oilers lead the NHL in shots on goal per game to the tune this year at 33.8, almost 34 shots per game. So they got to pick up, put box on goal and force Vizmelka to do some work here. Puck flipped up and out. And Fogel will come in on the left side, put it to the middle, but Keller's able to play it through the middle and then just about lost it. It bounces around and Fogel smacks it just wide of the net. Moser up the left wing. Off the boards and into the oiler end. So Kulak across to Stetcher, just got it out. And center ice, now Kane. Got the puck in on the right side to Fogel. He's up against the boards in that Arizona end as it does get worked free and out through center ice. It's Schmaltz. Now on the right to Dersey. His shot. Great save by Pickard. The rebound. They score. Cooley followed it up. He put it off of Pickard and in. And the Coyotes are up 2-1. A real poor Raymond Warren Fogel back in the old zone. And he got stripped, and that led to a four on two going the other way. And the Oilers had three men caught up ice, and Arizona found the loose change around the net. And it ended up past Calvin Picker, 2 1, Coyotes. Picker had made a great save off of Jersey, and Cooley was able to pick that thing out of the air. Was but how bouncing. much time did Jersey have to make a oh, play? Tons. You're sitting there caught up ice like that. That's. 20th goal of the year for Logan Cooley. 5.37 time of the goal. And Coyotes up 2-1 on the Edmonton Oilers. Shelley lost it at center ice. Brown will come in on the left wing for Edmonton. Back to the point. The shot by Nurse goes wide of the net. McBain will come up the left wing for the Coyotes. The cross on the right to Michelli. Just got it into the Edmonton end. He's up against the boards. Ryan gets it loose, though, to Nurse. will go across to Darane. Up the right wing. It's off the skate. Michelli's keeping it in. Right on the left wing.
Ticketmaster.ca. Foreigner, the Farewell Canada Tour. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor is your number one stop to get game day ready. For a limited time, on game days only, Oilers fans can come by a Sobeys or Safeway Liquor store and get stocked up with a 15-pack of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, now $26.99 each. Available only at select Sobeys and Safeway Liquor stores in the Edmonton area. Must be 18+. plus. See in store for details. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Proud fans and partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Athletes know that to advance your career, you've got to be part of a winning team. So, what about you? Are you working for a winning team? Well, here's your chance to do just that. Brandt is a strong and stable industry leader with career opportunities across Canada. We have hundreds of positions available right now from parts, sales, positioning technology, heavy-duty mechanics, and more. Be a part of a winning team. Earn your stripes by joining Brandt today. Find out more at BrantJobs.com. Listen on air, air, online, online, and and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Cam Luna, Bob Stauffer, we're here at Rogers Place. Two to one, Coyotes lead. Six minutes, 12 seconds gone in the second period. Doan and Cooley scoring for Arizona. Henrique has the goal for Edmonton. Face off in the Oilers zone. Kraus got the puck to the middle, but there was Ekholm for Edmonton. For McLeod, right wing to Perry. In over the line, now on the right side towards the net. Ryan trying to get a hold of it on the end boards. It will come loose. And up the right side to get it out. Was small or make that Valamaki. Got it up to the blue line for Gunther. He's forced out of the zone by Perry. Kraus has it at center for the Coyotes. It's pass on the right. That's off a stick, and it launches into the crowd. And we'll get a center ice face off. Quick out-of-town update. Pizza 73. Bakersfield Condors in Coachella Valley. Two minutes in. Philip Camp has scored. It's one nothing Baco. Here, Edmonton's been outshot at home 16-10 by Arizona. And it has not been an electric high performance so far from the Oilers tonight. Through the middle. Puck directed into the Oilers zone. Ekholm will turn it up the right wing. Get it up to the line. Kolyachonik on the right to Brown. Off the boards and in. Pickard to Ekholm. To the middle where he finds McLeod. He's able to bring it out. Comes through center. Now down the right wing. Into the Coyote end. Stops on the right side. About top of the circle. Wanted to get that low. O'Brien gets in front of it. And that goes out of play as he hit either McLeod or Kolyachonik with it and it went out of play. Asaf should stay in the Arizona end. We're here in the Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth. The Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and no payments, no interest for one year. Dry saddle to take the draw for the Oilers. Goes to Dersey. Cross to Schmaltz on the right. Will get it out. Long pass. He was looking for Keller. And whistle went. Is that offside? Yes. I thought it might have been early. Yeah, that was offside. Take that face off all the way back down into the Arizona end. to the right of Amelka. Puck into the skates of dry sidle. Dug out by Schmaltz. So go behind his net. The right side to Moser. Off the boards. Now to Keller. Comes into the Oilers' own right wing. He'll get it across. Give it to Moser on the left. Hammers it around to the right. Keller centering pass. That was broken up by DeArne. Keller from the angle. He'll get it around to the left wing point. Moser left side to Schmaltz. Get it to Kerfoot, but he gets hit by Drysidle. Puck up against the boards inside the Edmonton zone. Two to one, Arizona leads. We're eight minutes into the second period as it comes free, top of the circle. Drysidle goes across to Kulak. He'll come down the left wing. In over the line, winds up, rips a shot off the arm of Amelka, and it comes out to center. He got all out one. Oh. He hammered that puck. On the left wing, Hyman comes in. He'll cut towards the net. His shot, and that one off the stick of Dursey just went over the goal. Puck cleared out. Oh, yeah. 
Owners. Owners are starting to move their feet here at camp. Kane on the right wing, now to full. Into the Coyote zone, goes to the right wing side. Now to the left, back to the left wing point. Nurse plays it off the end boards. Kane trying to find it right wing, and Michelli goes through the middle to Doan. He does get it out. Fogel back in on the left wing. Will shoot it. Stick saved by Vamelka. Michelli to McBain. Now to Doan, and he put it right into the Edmonton bench. Letters are ratcheting up the intensity here. They played great at home against Colorado and wrote maybe their best performance of the season. 6-2 win. Did enough to win in Calgary the next night. And real strong, given the fact they did have Connor McDavid. Real strong performance at home against Vegas. But Arizona's playing loose, and they can strike offensively, and they've touched the order up for a couple here. And Edmonton's starting to get their feet moving a bit. Derek Ryan winning the draw. Aaron A is able to shoot it in to the Coyote zone. Puck goes to the left wing boards. Ryan's pass like it's picked off by Cooley. But Ryan staying with it, keeps it in on the left wing. Puck on the left side into the corner. Janmark was there for a moment. Gunther won't get it out, kept it by Brown. Brown goes cross corner for Matthias Janmark. Now in behind the net to Brown. Brown out to Ryan, got knocked down by Kesselring, couldn't get a wow, shot to her. Jordan Samuels Thomas is just sitting, watching these guys get cleaved right in front of him. Michael Kesselring, he's never going to get a penalty the way this one's being officiated tonight. Center ice on the right side, Cooley will dump it into the Oilers zone. Darren has got to go back for it. Reverses to Kulak, now up the left wing to Brown. Off the boards, into Coyote zone. It goes to the left wing corner. Coming up to the halfway mark of the second period. 2-1 to one Arizona leads. It gets cleared out to center. Stetcher on the right wing. Flip the puck in. Holloway goes after it. Goes to the end boards. Now comes over to the left side. Up to the top of the circle. Kept in by Nurse. Polyachonik gets hit on the end boards. Puck goes to Holloway. He's in behind the net. He'll get it in front of the goal. Goes right through the slot. Here's Stetcher. He'll shoot it. Club save made by Vimelka. And he's going to hold on to it with 9.39 to go in the second. 2-1. to one. Coyotes lead the Oilers. We'll take a break from Rogers Place in downtown Edmonton. It's four dealers. NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Portage College graduates are incredibly employable. How does Portage know? 99% of employers surveyed said they would hire a Portage grad. Get career ready at Portage College. Learn more by visiting portagecollege.ca. Get ready to live sky high. Sky Signature Suites offers remarkable units for rent featuring sophisticated floor plans, designer finishes, and breathtaking views. Experience resort-like amenities including a full-time concierge, yoga and fitness studios, golf simulator, plus indoor and outdoor lounges for you to live your best life. Visit SkySignatureSuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Edmonton, Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Edmonton Oilers. Connor McDavid! Fantastic! Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Believing in yourself takes confidence. At Portage College, 93% of grads say their education gave them the skills and knowledge they needed for their careers. That's the kind of confidence that leads to great results. Learn more at portagecollege.ca. All games, all seasons. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. 2-1, to one, Coyotes leading. 9.39 to go in the second period. Cameron along with Bob Stoffer. We're here at Rogers Place. Shots are 16-13 for Arizona. Face off in the Coyotes zone to the left of Vimelka. Tricidal Hyman, Nugent Hopkins out there with Ekholm and Bouchard for Edmonton. Kerfoot taking the draw, but the puck goes to Hyman. He's on the right wing boards. Now Tricidal to the blue line to Bouchard over to Ekholm. 
Got it in behind the net. It rolls around a curve foot. He'll get it to the line and just out. Eckholm backpedaling at his own blue line. Now it's Eckholm in on the left wing. We'll stop up top of a circle. Couldn't get a pass through to Nugent Hopkins. It does come out. Keller didn't see it behind, but Schmaltz follows it up. He'll bring it in. He got caught by Nugent Hopkins, though. Nugent Hopkins go in behind the Euler net on the right wing to Leon Drysaddle to the middle of the ice. He'll come all the way across at center to Hyman. He'll get over center right, so shoot it in. Vimelka out of his net. Plays it to Kesselring. Gets it out. Ekholm to Hyman. Hyman on the right wing. Just got it in. Michelli will give it to Kesselring. Kesselring to Michelli. He's into the Euler zone. Right side to Dome. Left wing to McBain, now in behind the net and wanted to get it to Michelli. That's broken up. Henrique will get it on the right wing for McLeod or to Fogel out to center ice. Mark dumped right back in. Don goes after it. Bouchard gets there first to Fogel. Now to Henrique. Henrique into the Arizona end. Left wing is passed too far for Kane. It goes to the end boards. Henrique follows. Works it on the left side. In behind the net to Kane. Goes over to the right with Moser on him. Rims up to the blue line, but McBain there for the Coyotes. He'll get it out. Two to one, Arizona leads. Eight minutes to go here in the second period. And center ice, Dursey. Get the puck on the right wing to Cooley. He'll go to the right corner. Take it out by Kulak. At the top of the circle is Kane. We'll float it through the middle and it gets out. Chonik, it across, now it gets to Kraus, and over the line to Cooley, all the way over to Gunther, it's shot, and the save made by Pickard. As that goes off the right arm and wide of the net, Kane will bring it up the left wing, get it out to center ice, flip it high in the air. Bounces in to the Coyote end, goes to the left wing corner. Brown on the end boards, around to the right wing point for Stetcher. Get the puck to the right board. Stetcher's got to come in from the blue line. He'll keep it in. Brown, going to get it free. Pull your Chonik, got it around to the point. That's kept in. And now it's Nurse, left side. He'll shoot it just off a stick. It goes wide. Stetcher keeping it in on the right. Got it in behind the net to Brown. Comes over to the left, to the top of the circle. Now off the boards to Nurse. He'll go to the left wing corner. Behind the net, that goes by McLeod, but to the blue line, Stetcher to Brown, a one-timer, and off the blocker of Vimelka. That goes out of play. 6.42 to go here in the second period. 2-1, to one, Coyotes leading the Edmonton Oilers. Faceoff will be in the Arizona's end to the left of Vimelka. McLeod to take the drop for the Oilers. This line hasn't had much going. McLeod, Holloway. Holloway did have one good point blank look, high slot in the first, but after a brilliant performance against Vegas, they've been a little quiet so far. Well, Mackey will fire it down. It's not going to be icing, and O'Brien goes to the right wing corner. Got a penalty coming up on Edmonton. Echo. Tied up with Carconi. That's a tough call. Edmonton is about to be shorthanded. All right. Ekholm to the box. He protests as he goes. Second power play of the game for Arizona. They're 0 for 1 with a man advantage. And again, we're seeing Henrique and Nugent Hopkins here. Two lefties. Oiler penalty kill brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Face off to the right of Picker. Puck gets into some skates. It'll go on the right wing boards. Nurse will get it up and out and all the way down. Melko out of his net. will take it behind the goal. Leave it back there. As Jersey up the right wing. Right across. All the way across. Leave it to Kerfoot. Now to Schmaltz. Comes in on the right side. Over on the left to Keller. Behind the net to Kerfoot. Kerfoot to Keller on the right wing in the oiler end. Back to the blue line to Dursey. Left side, the one-timer there by Gunther. It goes off of DeArnay. DeArnay, that one's hurting. Puck goes to the right wing. Now DeArnay behind the net. Gets away from Schmoltz. 
Gave it to Nurse. Rims it hard past Keller and down the ice. The Oilers will make changes. Jersey out from behind his goal. 5.35 to go in the second period. 2-1 to one, Arizona leads. Jersey to Schmaltz. Now to Keller to Schmaltz. On the right wing to Gunther. Puck gets to the middle of the ice. And Matthias Janmark will play it all the way down. 45 seconds to go in the man advantage. For the Coyotes. Puck brought in on the right by Cooley. Goes in behind the net. Cooley up to the left wing. Stop. Lost an edge. Lost the puck. And Stetcher will get it out and all the way down. Long pass. Carconi in on the right. Pass to the middle. And Cooley couldn't get his stick on it. And that is cleared out and down the ice. This time by Fogel. Look out to center. Make that Kulak. Was able to get it all the way down. Puck brought in on the left wing. On the left wing boards. It's inside the Oilers zone. Carconi got it free. Penalty's almost over. Goes to Kraus behind the net. Now on the right to Cooley. Arizona 0 for 2 with the man advantage. Kraus on the right wing boards. About top of the circle. Cross ice pass. And it was fired all the way over to the right corner by Valamaki. Broken up by Fogel. Get it to the line, but that doesn't get out. Arizona's going to make changes. So Nurse will take it in behind his goal. No wait back there. It's coming down to four minutes. Goal in the second period. Two to one. Arizona leads. Dry saddle up the right. Cuts to the middle at center. Dodges a hit. Brings it in now on the left. Goes top of the circle to the blue line. The one-timer by Ekholm. And a right pad save made by Vimelka. On the end boards was Kane. Gets the puck into the left wing corner. He gets tied up. O'Brien in there too. It'll get to the line just over the stick of Eckholm and out. That center ice is dry sidle. Gave it to Bouchard to walk in, come in on the right wing. Oh, shoot it. That one right off the head of Vimelka. And McBain off the boards and out with it. Matias Eckholm up the right wing for dry sidle. Into the Coyotes and across. The one timer off the post by Hyman. Here's Dry Saddle right wing to the point. Kulak's pass and that off of Schmaltz's stick. It just comes out. Kulak will rip it right back in. Oilers big changes. What is he watching? Total interference on the zone entry for Edmonton. No call. Kulak. In on the right, now on the right wing to Holloway. His centering pass goes off a few sticks, and it's Kerfoot to the middle. The Kessel ring, but he won't get it out. Now it gets to center ice. Schmaltz will shoot it in. Pickard will stop it behind the goal. Now rim it to Holloway. Holloway to the middle for Darnay, left side to McLeod. He'll dump it in. 2.25 to go here in the second. 2-1 to one, Arizona leads. Puck near the top of the circle in the Coyote end. Or top of the circle for McLeod. And he's able to puck to the corner. Polyachonik will rim it. It won't get out. Kept in by Stetcher. Shot towards the net. That gets blocked. Bringing it out through center ice. And into the zone is Keller. Put it behind the net. Kerfoot back to the point for Dersey. Now on the left, and that pinballs off a couple of sticks. Fogel takes the puck into the right corner of the Oilers zone. Over to Nurse. Nurse up the left wing. He'll go through and find Fogel. Comes in on the right. He'll cut to the goal, and that goes off a stick. He never got the shot on net. As Dersey was able to break it up, got throw to center. Now to Krause, he'll dump it in. Gunther chops it in behind the goal. Kane will get it around the boards to Fogel. To Nurse. Nurse right at the blue line. It's poked away by Dersey. And Henrique can come in on the left wing. Henrique towards the net. It's just swatted away by Vimelka. Goes over to the right wing inside the Coyote zone. And it's Gunther up in the air and out with it. 
Bouchard to Hyman in over the line, right wing to Nugent Hopkins. His shot, pad save made by Vamelka. It goes to the right wing corner. Nugent Hopkins playing it in behind the net. We're into the last minute here on the second. Two to one, Coyotes lead. Nugent Hopkins on the left board. It's a shot on net, pad save by Vamelka. It gets rimmed past Bouchard down the ice. It will be icing as Bouchard just got back. Doan was right there, but it's an icing call. 45 seconds to go here in the second period. Well, you got to like the push from Edmonton here, no question about it. They're now out shooting Arizona 13 to 6 in this period. And they've yet to have a power play. And there could have been a couple. And that doesn't include a post from Zach Hyman and a great save by Vizhmelka off the Edmonton Oilers. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, right pads or right pad stop there for Vizhmelka. Saddle taking the face off against McVeigh to the right of Vimelka. It gets into their skates, goes over to the left wing. Don't want to get it to the line. Ekholm keeps it in. It hit Nugent Hopkins. Goes to the middle. Michelli gets it out. Bouchard to Hyman into the Arizona end. Left wing to Dry Saddle. Now to Ekholm in from the left point. He'll pass across on the right. Nugent Hopkins. He'll shoot it. Saved by Vimelka. The puck. Sent up in the air and out and down the ice. It'll be icing. Just misses the Edmonton net. 16 seconds to go here in the second period. Face off to the right of Vimelka is dry saddle Nugent Hopkins in Hyman stay out. At Coleman Bouchard on the back. Bain taking the draw for Arizona. Moser, Kessel Ring just got it around the glass past Eckholm. It will get out, won't be hard enough for icing though. Bouchard to Eckholm, six seconds to go. Comes in on the left wing. Eckholm to the middle. The shot by Hyman didn't get through. Left wing corner, and the period will come to a close as the teams trade goals here in the second. Edmonton down by one after 40 minutes of play, which, if I recall, is about the same situation they were in when yep. they were in uh, Arizona. Yeah, no last. question. Yep. Uh, Cam, a better second period from Edmonton. They put 13 shots in the net. They hit a post. They didn't have a power play to work with. Some pretty good things happened that period for the Oilers, and they got to keep coming. Uh, this is... This was always going to be a tough game. They're probably better than their record indicates. Of course, they went 0-12 and 2 during a, a certain stretch of the season here. And that was during the time that the Oilers played uh, Arizona. Oilers going to have to work and grind here in the third period to find a way to get a victory. Oilers were down 3-2 after 40 and February 19th in Arizona. Came back to win that game 6-3. They're down 2-1 after 40 to the Coyotes. Well, how the third period goes, that's still to be written. And so is the second intermission. That's where Reed Wilkins and Rob Brown, they've got it for you when we come back. Two to one, Coyotes lead the Oilers after 40 minutes from Rogers Place. It's Ford Dealers NHL Hawk on the Oilers Radio Network. Until April 20th, make the shift to more savings at Fountain Tire and get up to 25% off select tires, including Goodyear. Restrictions apply, financing available, book online today. Uh, I forgot to mention the bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. Oh, I knew 15 seconds wasn't long enough. Hey, Paul Brandt here. You know what I'm a fan of? Alberta. The wide open spaces, the highways and byways, and a rugged, beautiful terrain that I'm proud to call home. Maybe that's why I'm also a fan of my Ford F-150. It's tough, capable, and smart, which makes it a natural fit for roads like these. So if it's a new truck you're looking for, look no further than the truck Albertans love to drive, F-150. Head into your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. Until April 20th, make the shift to more savings at Fountain Tire and get up to 25% off select tires, including Goodyear. Restrictions apply, financing available, book online today. Uh, I forgot to mention the bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. Oh, I knew 15 seconds wasn't long enough. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Swings it around to the right side. Stetcher back behind the goal to Kane. He'll back in in front of the net. Here's Henry. Scores! Adam Henry shovels it home. 
Okay, that was Henrique scoring a minute 49 into the second period. It tied at 1-1. Arizona would score less than four minutes later. So 2-1 Coyotes after two periods here at Rogers Place. That you're looking to the highlight zone for Century Casinos. All in, all games, all season. Century Casinos, three great locations. Edmonton, St. Albert, and next to the Edmonton International Airport. Welcome to the winner zone. Well, Rob, there are chances out there, aren't there? <laughs> there are a lot of chances. Uh, both teams are getting them. The Oilers, second half of the second period, they started to get more of the chances. Uh, creating, uh, they're starting to play off of the, the turnovers in the neutral zone. And Arizona turned the puck over a few times, and the Oilers started to get some pressure. It started with the, the Oilers' big line as Leon Nugent and Hyman had a, a few great looks. Uh, post hit by Hyman. Uh, it was a entertaining period, but again, still, uh, the Oilers are getting chances, but they're still giving some up. It wasn't, I wouldn't call that a clean second period, but I do believe the Edmonton Oilers were much more emotionally engaged in that 20, and it showed as they started to take over in the second half of it. And a much better period for the line of Henrique, Kane, and Fogel. They haven't been together long, well, five periods. That was clearly their best one. It, it was, although they were on for the the, the second goal against yeah, for the true, Arizona yeah. Coyotes. Uh, they were, I thought, quieter in, in the game the other night. Uh, in the first period, then the first half of that second period, they started creating. Kane could have easily have two goals in this period. Uh, Fogel could have had a couple goals. He almost scores on a partial breakaway late at the period. I wish he would have just taken that all the way across. He's got good speed. He's got good size. I think he could have taken that right through the crease. Instead, he tried uh, stuffing it. Um, but they, they did look more uh, at ease with each other. They looked like they had a little more chemistry. Um, but it was... Uh, Arizona is quick. Uh, they, they move the puck well. It's a very young team, and they're not afraid to to, to, to make plays, to take chances. But when you do that, sometimes you turn the puck over. And there was probably three or four times in that late second period where Arizona got the puck close to the blue line, weren't able to get it out, and that's when the Oilers counter-strike. The Oilers just have to find I mean, is it Velmelka? Is that how you say oh, that? Oh, Velmelka, yeah. Yeah, he's played very well. Uh, there was a play where Kulak came all the way up from his own zone and got the puck and absolutely fired it from the left side here. That was a great save. And there was a couple other big saves, a couple off of Nuge. So the others are getting their chances. They, I, I think if you got to get in the face of this Coyote goaltender, because what he sees right now, he is stopping. I think the others need some more traffic in front. Seems like everything is a one-and-done play. And I think the others need to create a little bit more uh, in-zone offense by stuffing everyone in front of the net and getting into, getting into the eyes of the goaltender. Because right now, if he sees it, he stops it. Shots in that period, 15-7 in favor of the Oilers. So Edmonton now out shooting Arizona 21-17 for the game as the Oilers uh, trying to grab their 49th win of the season. And if they get a point tonight, it would be their best season on home ice outside of anything that happened in the 1980s. So again, as we've talked <laughs> they about... Were Rob, yeah, they, they were good that decade. They were good that decade. So it's been a... Uh, pretty good home ice season after how poorly they started here at Rogers Place. Uh, but just quickly again before the game, if or I guess during the first period, Elliot Friedman reported that uh, the Coyotes have been told, I guess not just the players, probably everybody in the whole organization, that after Wednesday's game, when Edmonton is there, uh, some of the players and staff are going to go to Salt Lake City and start checking <laughs> out the facilities. And who knows, maybe call some realtors. Well, you know what's weird is, is is when they told their players. They told them in the afternoon of a game day. So as soon as the players find out, now they got to start calling their families because it's not one where, okay, yeah, we're moving. Okay, we'll just keep it secret from the wife and kids and mom and dad until after the game. So it, to me, it's like, okay, why wouldn't you let them know last night or wait until after the game? It's kind of weird that they did it in the middle of the afternoon on a game day. Having said all of that, it hasn't really affected the Coyotes as they've looked very good through 40 minutes. The Oilers just, to me, the Oilers in the third period just execute. Yeah. They, they're, they're getting their opportunities now. They just have to finish on some of their opportunities. I think there's been three goal posts, if not four goal posts. Oh, in this what game. a pass from Leon to Hyman late in the period <laughs> for that one post. That was a, Man. yes. And uh, Leon just waited out, waited out, and eventually that seam came through, and it was an absolute bullet. Uh, and then there's another try where Nugent Hopkins was backdoor. Again, he's had two times where he's been wide open for wide open one-time open nets. And the defensive pairing of 
uh, Bouchard and Ekholm. <laughs> the first time it was Bouchard with a bullet off the skate of Nugent Hopkins, and Ekholm, he throws it in the glove of Nugent Hopkins. He wasn't able to get a scoring chance on either one. But the chances are there right now for the Oilers, though. Just don't give up the grade-A scoring chance against because there are some skilled players on the Arizona Coyotes. You do not want them to extend the lead. 2-1, the Coyotes leading the Oilers after two periods here at Rogers Place. Rob, uh, back at it tomorrow against Vancouver. Final home game of the regular season will be on uh, Monday against the San Jose Sharks. So I was on the radio in Regina with Drew Remenda today. Well, how's Drew doing? Drew's doing well. He was actually in San Jose, but he's on a Regina radio show with Jamie Nye, who used to work at Chet. Well, you probably I, remember him. I he do was like on holidays. I, yeah, I do like Regina, but if I had my choice, I think I'd prefer San Jose at this Drew time of year. Drew loves you, by the way. Drew's he a th- nice he man. Th- he thinks you're a hockey genius. Well, I mean... He's a very smart man himself. I can understand why he thinks that. He was he was talking to me about uh, McDavid's season mm-hmm. and his Hart Trophy candidacy. Yep. And he said he had Connor McGahey on, our buddy from the Avalanche, yep. uh, on yesterday talking about McKinnon. And, and, and he, he said to me, you know, what's McDavid doing this year that he hasn't done other years? And I almost struggled to answer because it's like, well... I mean, he just. <laughs> I, I, he, You're right. He's going to get 100 assists. He won't have. He'll have about half as many goals, oddly enough, and his season will be just as spectacular. But I, I said the thing about McDavid, and of course he's not playing tonight. But there's never been a play, and we see it every night, Rob. And we we recognize that we're maybe guilty of sometimes not talking about him enough because yep. you just get to used to. I, I mean, has there ever been a player? And I know Bobby Orr skated incredibly well. I didn't. I'm not old enough quite to have seen him in his prime. But like, if McDavid gets the puck in front of his own net, if he cleans up a rebound defensively, you know it's going to be a zone entry at the other blue line. No, one hundred percent. And I said to Drew, even some of the best players over the years, you know, in a, in a playoff series, because because you know Drew's told told stories when he was on coaching staffs, even great players, well, you know, put him on his backhand. He'll always dump it in. He won't stick handle on his back. Like. Big David, where do you put him? Like he, he'll go into the middle. He'll go into traffic. He'll try to drive wide. Well, you, with McDavid, you're trying to limit the damage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, and, and we've said this many, many times that the defenseman, the forward coming back, the defenseman playing him, and the goaltender could all do their jobs exactly like they're supposed to do it, and McDavid can still score just because he's better than those three guys. So uh, the thing about this year, though, there's been there's four or five players, probably five players in the National Hockey League that are having MVP seasons. And I think that's great for the National Hockey League. Uh, Kucherov, I mean, we, we talked last year when McDavid had 150 points. He was a unanimous Hart Trophy winner. Like, it was hands down. Kucherov could have 150 points this year. Yeah. And McKinnon in, in Colorado, he's got 50 goals, and he's going to have 130, possibly 140 points. And Matthews, he could get 70 goals. And Panarin's going to have 120 points. Like, this is a great year for individual players in the National Hockey League. That's why it's so fun is when anyone else is mentioned with Connor McDavid in a race, whether it's a scoring race or a heart race, just means that there's some other players having some sp- pretty special years. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, the Oilers will need a, a – well, maybe special will be an overstatement. But they need a better third period tonight than the first two that they've had as Arizona leads at 2-1. We'll check that out-of-town scoreboard when we get back. Four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. When you play the largest 50-50 in sports, everybody wins. Your support makes all of oil country a better place. A place of kindness, caring, and compassion. Uplifting those in need, changing lives forever. The largest 50-50 pot in professional sports is currently growing by the second. Get your tickets now at edmontonoilers.com and help change lives today. Maybe even your own. AGLC license number 645-766. Stanley Cup Playoffs Bracket Challenge presented by Betway.net is back. And now it's time to take your shot. Face off against family and friends. And take aim at predicting this year's playoffs. Whether you're pulling for the Panthers, going big on the blue shirts, or seeing stars all the way. Who do you think hoists the cup this year? Sign up today for a chance to win exclusive prizes at NHL.com slash bracket. 
It's our YEG with 630 Chad. 630 Chad and Jubilation's Dinner Theater want to celebrate you. Join in on the fun as Eileen Bell hosts a listener appreciation night at Jubilation's Dinner Theater's production of The Beach Boys of Summer on May 1st. Then lace up those tennies to support the 2024 Edmonton Jamin Built MS Walk, Sunday, May 26th at Rundle Park. Your participation and fundraising helps meet today's challenges and finding tomorrow's answers for all Canadians living with MS. For details on these and more events, visit 630Chad.com. With Global News, I'm Thomas Dias. An Epiton area distillery behind four liter discounted vodka jugs that stirred up controversy is now demanding an apology from the cabinet minister who said the product was not responsibly priced. Service Alberta Minister Dale Nelly was not happy with the $50 price tag. The CEO of T Rex Distiller, Yvonne Ernich, says it created an overwhelming amount of negative public feedback. They had left T Rex announcing Monday that it would halt production, but Ernich says a wave of support since then has prompted the distillery to restart production of the jugs next week. Anybody wants to do it the right way, he wants to play the right way every single night, and, uh, and uh, he wants everybody to, to be on that, uh, on that train. So uh, he, he's been really good for us. He, he talks when he has to in the room, but um, I think just his, the way that he, he carries himself and, uh, and goes out there and plays every night is uh, uh, huge for, for some of us to look up to. How did you rank yourself um, on your zone entries on the, on the power play? Being the, the deep guy back, how was it? I think I was one for two. I think the second one, I went from dump to a dump. So <laughs> not the best not the best one there, but um, try to work on it tonight. And then what, do you, what do you expect for your 31st birthday from your teammates? <laughs> yeah, well, just a, a, a big game, a big win is, uh, is kind of all you can – Hope for obviously a big back to back here, but uh, we're focused on tonight. Just growing up, any you know, it's kind of hard to pick one, but as a kid, uh, any specific birthday gift or any kind of stand out that uh, um, like in or yeah. Right? Can you just how you feel? And I feel good. I feel good. Probably won't go tonight, but uh, yeah, I feel good. The uh, the five and seven, the back to back. How much does that play into it? If you were, if you guys weren't even playing until Sunday, would tonight not be enough? What was the math there? Uh, five games in seven days. Okay. Back to back. Does that come into it, or is this just more of all about you? Two? Just want to feel. I want to feel good. I want to feel uh, at my best and. Um, that's not, that's not the case tonight. We know that rest isn't something that you generally look for each year. It's about being healthy. Is it, is it always hard to, you know, to make maybe a big picture decision versus you know, in the moment wanting to help out? 
I never want to miss games. I really don't. Um, it's frustrating. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we're after bigger things here. Um, you know, and, and being healthy, everyone being healthy is, uh, is priority number one. Does it make it a bit easier when you watch your team play as well as you did yeah. two nights ago? Yeah, it was great. I thought they played uh, they played really, really, really well. Solid, in control the whole night. Um, you know, not... Uh, there was no stressful moments, so um, it was great. You've been on the bench for all of it, but the biggest improvement for your team has really been your defensive play five on five. Right? Like you're, I think you're second best in the NHL for quite a stretch here. But from even out, watching upstairs, what do you see that's been the biggest improvement defensively five on five? Um, well, I think we're we're just really aware of it. I think everybody is. Uh, everybody talks about playing defense. Um, you know, but our room, you know, it's uh, it's all we really talk about. Um, you know, we want to be a tight tagging team. We want to play that 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 simple game. Obviously, we got we got the players to uh, to open it up if we have to um, and play that offensive game. We can do both. But you know, I think just the biggest thing for our group is just awareness. Just you know. Two to one, Coyotes lead the Oilers, getting ready for the third period of play. Cam Moon along with Bob Stoffer. We're here at Rogers Place. Play the largest game day 50-50 with life-changing jackpots. The Caring for Oil Country 50-50 total right now, $637,000 and climbing. Our next lucky winner could be you. Buy your tickets now at edmontonoilers.com slash 50-50. Need a push here from the Oilers in the third. They really started skating and back half of the second period. 14 to 6 with the final shots for Edmonton, period number two. Kessel ring into his own end for the Coyotes. He'll get it out to center, but it goes right to dry sidle. Got it to the blue line. That was it. Schmaltz will bring it in. Now on the left to Kerfoot, left wing corner to Keller. His pass to the middle goes through the slot. Down to the now to the right wing point. Alamaki will whip it across to Kesselring, left side, up near the blue line. Keller will shoot it towards the goal, and it goes off of Bouchard. Eckholm up the right wing to the blue line, doesn't get out though. Keller keeping it in. Out of Schmaltz to the middle, but nobody there for Arizona. Nugent Hopkins to Hyman to bring it to the neutral zone. Now back into his own end to Bouchard. Edmonton makes changes. Stetcher right side to Kane, directs it in. Vanilka out of his net, rims it. It'll go just off of the stick of on the left side off of Fogel, and he took a shot to save by Vanilka and the puck on the left wing. Nurse to Fogel. Fogel back to Nurse. Left wing. Oh, And this game is tied at two. Well, we talked about what Edmonton did against both Colorado and Vegas. They put pucks to the net. And that's what Darnell Nurse did in that sequence. Fogel wins a puck battle back behind the goal. Slings it back to Nurse in the left point. His long-range bomber. Nice deflection by Evander Keane, who picks up his 24th goal of the season. For a minute 12 into the period. And the Oilers have tied the game at two. The right side, Doan. Now to Michelli, comes into the Oiler end down the right wing. Michelli stops right corner to the blue line. Brown will shoot it, and that one goes off the stick of Kane. His stick breaks. He goes to get another. side that goes off a of Holloway and Puck dumped in. That almost kicked in off a of picker. 
the left wing. It's Holloway to get it out, or at least to the blue line. Now full or McLeod. This line's been having problems all game. Carconi into the left wing corner. Dumped through the ice by DeArnay. They'll go to the right wing for Perry. Now to McLeod. In the center ice, he'll shoot it in. Kesselring will go in behind the net. Bank it out to center. Ekholm, flip it right back in. Oilers will change the forwards. Yusuf Valamaki with it right between the hash marks in his own zone. And put cleared out and down the ice by Keller, or by Schmaltz. That'll be icing against the Coyotes. Three minutes, 17 seconds gone here in the third. Tied at two as the Oilers take it on Arizona. Bakersfield up 2-0 after one in Coachella Valley. Kemp and Savoy, the goal scorers. Carter Savoy, first game back in at least almost two months for Xavier Borgo, and he's got a power play assist in that game. Right side line of the face-off circle will be Nugent Hopkins. They'll win it back to the point to Ekholm to Bouchard, right wing to Dreisaitl. Now to Bouchard in the middle, a snap shot and a pad save made by Vimelka. Moser will get it out to Kerfoot through the middle, trying to get it to Keller, picked out of the air by Bouchard. Over to Ekholm, in his own end, now to Dreisaitl. He'll find Evan Bouchard up the left, he lost it to Schmaltz. Schmaltz comes down the left side, out to Keller, a backhand that misses on the short side. Nugent Hopkins out through the middle to Bouchard, now on the left wing to Hyman. Into the Arizona end, goes to the left wing corner, drops it back to Bouchard, top of the circle, that's broken up, odd man rush the other way. Keller down the right wing, over to Kerfoot, and breaking it up was Ekholm, so the Oilers come out, and it's Dreisaitl down the right side. Into the Coyotes end on the right wing. Dreisaitl can't get it down the right wing boards. Kolyachonik was in the way, it does come out. Stetcher lost an edge, but does sweep the puck over to Nurse. And center ice now on the right to Yan Mark will dump it in. Vanelka out of his neck, stops it, now plays it. Rims it on the right for Dylan Gunther. He'll give the puck to Logan Cooley, gets over center ice and dumps it in. We're tied at two, we're four and a half into the third period. It's along the boards inside the Edmonton end, and it is Stetcher to get it up in the air and out. This will not be hard enough for icing. Derek Ryan will fly after it and go into the right wing corner. Squeeze it up the right wing boards to Brown. Now to Ryan for Yanmark. Yanmark on the right wing boards. Pulls it off the right boards. Dishes to the point. Kulak will blast a shot. And the glove saved by Vamelka. Holds on to it. 4.59. Gone here in the third. Tied at two. Vamelka had a pretty clean look at it. Edmonton couldn't fight to create. A little bit of net front there as Connor Brown was trying to work his way through a check. So Kane has been involved in both goals in this game. This line's been on the ice for a pair. But on for one against as well. Aesop will be to the right of Vimelka. Henrique taking the draw against McBain. The puck gets to the middle of the ice and Michelli will bring it out. Michelli cuts to the middle. Goes over to the right wing point as he gains the Edmonton blue line. It's around on the left, Valimaki in from the point, but it is Fogel to D'Arnay. Now to Kulak, out to center ice for Kane. Flip it off the end glass, now he put it over the glass. So we got a neutral zone faceoff. 5.20 gone here in the third. Edmonton. Think we'll see, you think we'll see Connor tomorrow night? Yes. So do I. Just my guess. Yeah. But he did skate this morning. And yeah. Well, back half of the yep. second in the first six minutes of this period has been closer to what we saw against Vegas without McDavid in the lineup. Hard, straight, yep. direct hockey. So Henry taking this face off against McBain. Fogel and Michelier jostling over on the wing. Oh. McBain out of the face-off circle. Michelli will come in. 
Let's drop the puck oh. here. Holy cow, you guys. Very concerned with Fogel and McBain. And it's Bouchard in the neutral zone up the right wing. He's able to shoot it in. Vimelka played it, gave it away to Henrique, put it in front of the net. It went off of Vimelka. And Michelli can bring it out up the left side for the Coyotes. Into the other end, cuts across the middle. He'll shoot it. Glove save made by Pickard. And then he got hit with a stick. What are you doing? You got to call out Samuels Thomas. You can't let a guy flick a stick at the goaltender. Five thirty-nine gone here in the third, tied at two. Ooh, yeah, he, Calvin Pickard took that a was pretty stick right in the face. I don't, I'm not sure what you're missing there. Yeah. It's not like the stick was knocked into his face. And he that's just, just got him with it. I'm surprised that's not a penalty. Yeah. What about you? Me too. Face off to the right of Picker. Ryan wins it. And Darren A will get it up in the air and out. McLeod, it's a puck into the Arizona end on the right side to Perry. Back to McLeod to Corey Perry. Swings it to Kulak. will shoot from the angle. Save made by Vimelka. A puck along the boards. Yannick will get the puck out for the Coyotes, and it's McLeod back into his own end. Vincent D'Arnais is being pressured. It'll go over to Kulak on the right to Perry for the blue line. Most Too many flybys from this line tonight. On the right side for Jersey, got pushed off of it. McLeod will get it out to D'Arnais. Comes into the Arizona end on the left. Now to Perry. His pass misses McLeod. Put it to the net. Kerfoot going the other way. Comes into the oiler end. Kerfoot goes over to the right wing. Now back near the point. It comes across to Dursey. Fanned on the one-timer. Went off the heel of his stick. Corey Perry can get it out. He'll find Dylan Holloway. Over center ice. He'll shoot it in. Tied it two. We're here in the third. Moser out to center ice. On the right wing to Kerfoot, in over the Euler line, backhand pass, and that one got blocked before it could get through to Keller. Back home, up the right wing for Hyman. Keller gets in front of him, and will have to go back to Eckholm, and he'll get it up in the air. Valimaki will take it behind his net for the Coyotes. Look out. Get it up the left side. That's not going to get out. Nugent Hopkins. It's a good pinch by Bouchard, but if he doesn't make the play, it's a two-on-one clean for Arizona. This time, Gunther get it up in the air and out. It hit Kraus. It goes into the Oilers' zone. Matias Ekholm on the end boards. In there with Lawson Kraus. Goes in behind the net. Nugent Hopkins gets away from Cooley. Comes up the left side. Now his pass on the right finds Dreisaitl. Into the Arizona and now to Hyman. Hit shot and a save made by Vimelka. Puck goes to the left wing. Nugent wow. Hopkins got spun around and it'll be wow. Gunther to bring it out. And Nugent Hopkins caught him. Julia Chonik at his own blue line. Puck to center ice in the neutral zone. And on the right wing, that was Yanmark just to get it in. It's right back out and coming up the left wing. It's Dome. Forced off of it by Nurse. It goes to the end boards. Michelli puts it through the slot. And now it's McBain on the right wing. Over to the right wing point. Good he read. That's broken up nicely by Connor Brown. He'll bring it out. We're tied at two here in the third. Brown into the Arizona end. He'll give it to Stetcher. Goes to the left wing corner. Towards the goal. Save Vimelka. The rebound. And Ryan plays it on net. And a save by Vimelka. He'll cover it up. We'll take a break. Eight minutes, 41 seconds gone here in the third. Tied at two. The Oilers and the Coyotes from Rogers Place. This is Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From no bar 
bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Celebrating 70 years in the signage industry, William Huff Advertising is the most recognized name in the game. An in-house, one-stop shop for all of your design, print, and installation needs. William Huff provides quality graphic solutions for everyone. Here in our city of champions and throughout the nation, they are the preferred signage partner entrusted by many of the biggest corporations, pro sports teams, and organizations to bring their identity to life. Recognize the name, get in the game. WilliamHuff.com it takes some courage to get out there and travel. You never know if your bags might mysteriously vanish. Or if that guacamole is going to come back to haunt you. Or if the plane just never takes off in the first place. But through it all, you have a partner in Alberta Blue Cross. Our travel insurance lets you take the security of home with you, wherever you go. Whatever life brings, be ready for it. Find travel insurance today at ab.bluecross.ca. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Cam Muda, Bob Stoffer. We are here at Rogers Place. Tied it to the Oilers and the Arizona Coyotes. Eight minutes, 41 seconds gone here in the third period. Adam Henrique, Darnell Nurse scoring for Edmonton. It's been Josh Doan and Logan Cooley scoring for the Coyotes. Off the draw on the Arizona end. Kane on the right wing, a shot, and that doesn't get through. Keller's going to turn it right up. Get it up in the air. It's a bouncing puck near the Edmonton blue line. Brett Kulak almost got his stick lifted. It does come out of the zone. Now it's brought in on the right. Kane got it away from Keller. Kane with Schmaltz closing the gap, but Kane gets away, comes down the left side. He'll shoot from the angle. Vamelka, the save. Rebound on the left side. Another shot. Vamelka, another save as that puck was on the left wing. And Henrique put it towards the net. 10.45 to go here in the third. Tied at two. Winner's pass line against Vegas the other night was... Brian McLeod with Dylan Holloway and Corey Perry. And tonight their best line has been Adam Henrique along with Evander Kane and Warren Fogle. Race off to the right of Amelka. McLeod will take the draw. Shots now 33-18 to 18 for Edmonton. Yeah, it's been a good push here from Edmonton. Yes. Puck back to the blue line, and Ekholm gets it to the slot. It's in some skates and chopped near the point where Bouchard can keep it in on the right, and it'll go in behind the net. McBain trying to wheel up the right wing, does get it out. Now McLeod getting pressured. McBain gets it free in his pass on the left. It was looking for Carcone, but that was behind him. Bringing it out to center ice is McLeod. He's down the right wing. Now to Holloway, put it in behind the goal. Jersey back there for Arizona. Wow, I mean, there's McBain running a pick that drops the Oilers' Ryan McLeod. At center ice, Perry off the right wing boards. Come back to him. He'll shoot it. He'll rim on the left. We'll go to dry side. Got up against the boards with Josh Brown, and it's Cooley to get it out to center. Now Kolya Chonik will. Get the puck into the Oilers' zone. Poked around the right wing side by Stetcher, and it does come out. Kraus at center ice, just to the Edmonton blue line. Stetcher turns it to the right. Now through the middle to Hyman, comes in to the Arizona end right wing for a dry sidle to the point. Stetcher to the middle, and that one just gets off, goes off the stick of Hyman. The other way comes Cooley. Into the Oilers zone, he'll pass to the middle. A stick is lifted, and Drysdale is able to get it out. Malamaki will shoot it back in. Nurse will go in behind the Edmonton net. Move it. Nurse stepping out through the middle. Right wing to Nugent Hopkins. Cuts to the middle. Gets to center. Lifts it in. Goes to the end boards. Kessel ring on the end boards. Now to Doan. Doan will get it out of 
Michelli gloves it down, brings it in on the left wing, spun around, went off the end of his stick. Hyman on the right side to dry side. He's at the end of his shift, though, so he'll lift it in. Oilers will make a change as Michelli at his own blue line. One across to Brown, Josh Brown. Only got it to center ice. Kulak to Yanmar with Doan right there. We'll come back to Kulak and give it to DRNA on the right wing. Now to Brown. Connor Brown for the Oilers off the right wing boards. Got the puck into the Arizona end and Keller's going to wheel in front of his net. Scooping off the right wing side to Schmaltz. Wanted to get it back to Keller. It doesn't connect. Schmaltz came in. Kerfoot was in early. That's offside against the Coyotes. We're going to take a break with 8.03 to go in the third period. Oilers and Coyotes tied at two from Rogers Place and Sport Dealers. NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Hey, Paul Brandt here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm proud to call myself an Albertan. You know, after years of touring this great province in my Ford F-150, I've learned the value of driving a tough, capable, smart truck. Whether you're working for the weekend or long hauling it like I am, there's an F-150 for every Albertan with plenty of options to choose from, like available pro power on board. So if you're looking for a new truck, stop by your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. Get ready to live sky high. Sky Signature Suites offers remarkable units for rent, featuring sophisticated floor plans, designer finishes, resort-like amenities, and breathtaking views. Situated in the heart of Ice District, Sky is the address for socializing, dining, entertainment, and fun. A building like no other in a location like no other. Visit skysignaturesuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Look, I know this is radio, so it's hard to show you how much is on sale during the Big One Clearance event at End of the Row Flooring Centers, but it's a lot. Like this flooring, or this one, and all these. Yep, all at clearance pricing for a limited time. Now, you don't need to just imagine what it would look like, though. You can use our visualizer at endoftheroll.com to upload a picture of your room to see the flooring in your actual home. Try it. Find something you love, then get a great deal on it. At the Big One Clearance event, on now at End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. All games, all seasons. Season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Camlin and Bob Stauffer, we're here in the Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth. Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and old payments, no interest for one year. Tied at two, Oilers and the Coyotes, 8.03 to go in the third. Now, we th at least I thought Darnell Nurse's shot was deflected by Evander Kane. I mean, we've got a few minutes now, the game-tying goal, and it's still credited to Darnell as 10th of the year, being the Oilers' third 10-plus goal scorer on the back end. At the very least, yep. Evander Kane provided some screen. And got an assist. Yes, and got an assist. Puck dumped into the oiler end, and it's Kulak out from behind his net, up the middle to Yanmark. Oh, that just missed. Would have been a breakaway pass. It'll go down to the side of the net. Vimelka has to freeze it. 7.45 to go here in the third. Nurse scoring. Minute 12 into the third period. Tie this game. Shots in this period are 12-2 for Edmonton. The Oilers third in the NHL with 104 third period goals this season. Top four goal scoring team in the league. Race off to the right of Vimelka. Cooley through the middle of the ice was able to get out to center, but then Eckholm just takes it away. To Bouchard now on the left wing to Hyman. Comes into the Arizona end. He's driving down the left side. Goes in behind the net now. Comes free in the left corner. Eckholm behind the goal to Hyman. Off the left wing boards to Matias Eckholm. To Zach Hyman, top of the circle. Now to the right point. Bouchard, right wing, dry side. Oh, the shot! And the save made by Vimelka. Gunther will go through the middle and down the ice. It'll be icing against the Coyotes with 7-10 to go here in the third. And the game tied at two. And the right decision from Leon. Tried to sip one five-hole through Vimelka. Who came in with minus 11 in goals saved above expectation this season. But he's been solid tonight. Yeah. He's got 32 saves. Face off will be to Vimelka's right. As, yeah, Dry Saddle was looking one way, shooting the other, and trying to go five hole. 
Henrique taking the draw, wins it to the left wing point to Nurse. He'll go across to Stetcher. He'll shoot it, blockered away by Vamilka. Along the boards, sent high in the air and out by Dersey. Stetcher in his own end. On the right wing now to Adam Henrique. Gets over center ice, off the boards and in. to put the pressure on Kesselring. He's up against the boards. It dumped down and it does come out. And now brought into the oiler end. Keller has it left wing. Keller will shoot it. And that's blocked by Stetcher. Schmaltz left side to Kerfoot in behind the Edmonton goal. Left wing to Keller about top of the circle. Plays it low to Kerfoot. He's in behind the Edmonton net. Now to Schmaltz on the right side. Over to Keller on the left. Keller at the hash marks. Now skating towards the net from the angle. And the save made by Pickard. Kerfoot gets a loose puck. To the point for Kesselring. Brings it across the line. Goes all the way to the right side. Now to Keller. Good job, Nurse. Hold the stick there. Nurse trying to take that loose puck, but it goes off his stick. And Kerfoot in front of the goal and just missing it with Schmaltz. Oh, now boy. Schmaltz will get it in the slot. Over to the side. The shot saved by Pickard. Off of Keller is one-timer from the right wing. And Pickard was able to hold on to it. We'll take a break. 5.55 to go here in the third. The Oilers and the Coyotes are tied at two. From Rogers Place, it's Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Staying at the JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District offers prime access to Rogers Place and the Ice District without needing to go outside. Offering welcoming modern luxury, the JW offers an elevated experience unrivaled in Alberta. Visit JWMarriottEdmonton.com to book today. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor is your number one stop to get game day ready. For a limited time, on game days only, Oilers fans can come by a Sobeys or Safeway Liquor store and get stocked up with a 15-pack of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, now $26.99 each. Available only at select Sobeys and Safeway Liquor stores in the Edmonton area. Must be 18+. plus. See in store for details. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Proud fans and partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, honey, I overloaded the washing machine and there's a mini waterfall pouring through the basement room. We'll fix it. Don't worry, babe. And I might have horribly shrunk your lucky jersey. Oh! Life happens. Access Insurance can help. The save of the game is brought to you by Access Insurance. When Albertans need it most, they know they can count on the Access Insurance team for a huge save. It's easy to switch and save. Check out their Google reviews. Visit accessinsurancegroup.com. Staying at the JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District offers prime access to Rogers Place and the Ice District without needing to go outside. Offering welcoming modern luxury, the JW offers an elevated experience unrivaled in Alberta. Visit jwmarriottedmonton.com to book today. You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chat and on the Radio Player Canada app. Tied at two, the Oilers and the Coyotes. We've got 5.55 to go in the third. Cam Moon along with Bob Stoffer. We are here at Rogers Place. Race off in the Edmonton zone to the left of Calvin Pickard. Dry saddle taking the draw against Cooley. All game. <laughs> Trying to get that puck dropped. Now it is dropped. Kulak up the left board, is able to get it out. Now Kulak is passed just in behind McLeod. McLeod can bring it in now on the right wing. He'll throw it all the way across on the left. Rip towards the net by Perry, and it misses. And it goes around the boards and down into the Oilers' zone. Darren A to Kulak. Now through the middle to McLeod. Comes into the Arizona end. It'll be passed, sent across to the right for Darren A, and they'll say that went over and out and back in it's offside against Edmonton. So Dylan Holloway in that first game that he came up when everything was north and south there's been a little bit too much east west and that time had a chance just to put it on the net this after Perry unleashed a bomb idle a bomb Hammer. side yeah he hammered that Edmonton was down 2-1 to one after 40 Nurse scores a minute 12 in to tie it. Edmonton has never led in this game. Oh, God. <laughs> they dropped the puck. It wasn't right. It's 
What's that, the 18th time? Yeah, in this yes, game? at least. Travis Dumay, the former yep. Alberta Golden Bear, played for the Seattle Thunderbirds. His dad did. also played at the U of A, but not in hockey and football. He was a defensive lineman. I know, because I called his dad's games too. I'm getting old, Cam. <laughs> Here's Michelli to bring it in on the right wing. He'll drop it for Doan. He gets broken up. Dersey on the right point. A shot. That one off a leg goes wide. Moser in from the left side, but he won't keep it in. Here's Dreisaitl. Into Arizona territory to the middle. Ekholm shot saved by Vamelka, and the puck cleared out. Excellent look from Leon there to Matias Ekholm. Ekholm now to Hyman, comes in to the Arizona end, right wing to drive side of the point, Bouchard is shot, Vamelka steers it aside. Kerfoot in his own end is now going to loop back towards the net, Oilers will make a change. Kerfoot to Keller. Keller on the left will now dump it in. It goes wide to the Edmonton goal. Schmaltz on the right side. He's up against the boards. Now to Keller in the that right wing corner. That was a glove pass. I didn't call it down. It's along the right wing. And good work by Kane to muscle that thing out. Kerfoot will bring it back in on the left. To throw it across to Schmaltz. Cross corner, puck goes to the left wing point. Valamaki is shot and the save made by Picker. Keller, right corner to Schmaltz. Back to the blue line to Kesselring. To Schmaltz on the right side in the Oilers zone. Now to Kerfoot. He'll spin in behind the Edmonton net, go over to the left. Got it behind the goal to Keller. Keller out to the point. It comes over to Kessel Ring. One timer in the save made by Pickard. Didn't see where the rebound was, but that was okay because it's Nurse up the right wing. Off the right wing, boards it in. 3.35 to go in the third. Tied at two. The Oilers and the Coyotes. Kane on the right wing tried to put that off of Vimelka. It'll come up near the blue line, and Kraus skates away for Arizona. Down the right wing into the Oilers zone. Stops right corner. Centering pass off of Dayarnay. Goes to the left wing. Gunther. Top of the circle, left side of the blue line. One-time shot, and that one off the skate goes in behind the Oiler net. Cooley will get it to the blue line. Polyachonic cross to Josh Brown. Now in the left wing corner to Cooley. Cooley in front to Gunther, and he can't find the handle. That was a bouncing buck, never got the shot away, and it is cleared out by Darnay. Late call there. Chonick will get it up the right wing. 2.44 yep. left. Jay Whitcroft's got Connor Brown out in the ice here. Mark goes on the left side. Moser. Left wing to Michelli. Now Michelli's turning things up for Arizona. He'll get the center ice. He'll dump it cross corner. Eckholm on the end boards. To Perry, now up the right wing for Holloway. Get it to center ice to shoot it in. It won't be icing. Jersey to the line. Great job. Holloway kept it in, but only for a moment. It was Doan to get it out. Two minutes to go here in the third. Tied it to the Oilers and the Coyotes. Back home to center. Oh, oh he faked the dump in, and it threw everybody offside. So the Oilers will have a face-off outside the Arizona blue line with a minute 56 to go here in the third period. Tied at two. Shots now 38-24. Favor of Edmonton. 17-7 here in the third period. Dry saddle to Nugent Hopkins. He'll lift it in. Hyman goes after it. It goes in behind the net. Hyman took out Falamaki to puck along the left side, and it's Keller. Keller's been good. Yep. It's been strong on pucks. To Falamaki around the left wing to Schmaltz. Got it to center ice to Kerfoot. He's his... had the puck a lot. A now. lot. Kessel ring up the right wing. Gave it to Schmaltz, he'll dump it in. It goes to the left wing corner of the Oiler end. 
Comes up to Hyman. He'll give it to Dry Saddle. He'll bring it out. He'll go through the middle. Now on the left to Nurse. He'll get in over the line. Nurse will shoot it. Saved by Vamelka. Held on with a minute 14 to go into third period. And that was a good shot by Darnell Nurse down the left wing. Excellent activation by Darnell there. Leon Dry Saddle found him. And Vamelka fought that one off. Darnell almost had a second of the game. Almost squeezed it through. Yep. On the blocker side of Amelka, almost between his arm and his body. Face off to the right of Amelka. Try sidle against Gunther. Try sidle wins it. Puck goes to Ekholm. His shot glove save. Amelka held on to that. That had some high heat. It did. Like the time Boris Miranov hit Jason Arnott in a oh. slapper. Remember that? Start of a 96-97 yeah. season. And a hard shot by Matthias Eckholm. Dry will get back into that face-off circle, this time against McBain. Drysaddle wins it. Eckholm left point. Over to Bouchard. Right side to Nugent Hopkins. Into the corner. Drysaddle brings it up the right wing. We'll shoot it towards the net. Off a stick. It goes wide. Hyman on the end boards. We're into the last minute here in the third. We're tied at two. Oilers taking on the Coyotes. Puck sent to the blue line and out. Bouchard over to Matias Eckholm. He'll blast it right back in. Vimelka knocked it down and now got the puck over to the left wing. Cleared out by Kraus. We'll go down into the Oilers zone. Vogel. Schmaltz on him. Schmaltz took it away to the middle. Keller. His shot. And that's just off the arm of Pickard. Good save by Pickard. Dursey in from the right point now to Kerfoot. Right wing to the blue line. Moser left side to Schmaltz. He goes into the corner. Gets it out to the slot. And Kerfoot didn't want to shoot it. Wanted to give it to Keller. But... Henrique's able to get it out for Edmonton. Ten seconds to go here in the third period. Dursey back into his own end. A little reverse for Moser. Now through the middle to Doan. And this game's going to need a little extra. As the Oilers and the Coyotes are tied at two. We're now through 60 minutes of play. We'll take a break, come back with that overtime. From Rogers Place, this is Four Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Did you know the RCMP Police is over 99% of Alberta's landscape? From the oil sands to the Rockies to the prairies, the RCMP has a province covered. Providing policing services to more than 1,700 communities and with over 150 career specializations, the Alberta RCMP has something to fit everyone's goals and lifestyles. Visit rcmpcareers.ca and take the next step towards your career with the Alberta RCMP. A message from the Government of Canada. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Why not a little bit more? Oilers and Coyotes tied at two. We're getting ready for overtime. Edmonton is eight and four in three on three overtime, two and one in shootouts, so ten and five overall. Arizona five and five in the three on three overtime, two and zero oh in shootouts, or seven and five overall in extra time. So I think if you're Edmonton, you want to win it. In OT, ice is being repaired. Down at the one end, something's not quite right, but they're fixing it right now. We're going to see Nugent Hopkins dry settle and Darnell Nurse to start. Okay. Interesting. Nurse and Henrik, the goal scorers for Edmonton, Doan and Cooley. It's interesting because they don't have McDavid. You wonder, would they go Hyman with dry settle and... Maybe Nuge and Kane or something like that. Or maybe we're going to see McLeod yeah. with the Hyman. Get a speed out there. Yeah. If it goes like, got to win the draw. Schmaltz against Leon to start it. Winners have won 66% of the faceoffs in this game. Schmaltz, Keller, and Valamaki on the ice for the Coyotes. Of course, Arizona got a save. Connor Ingram on a penalty shot. 
That's right. In overtime. Nugent Hopkins is going to... Leon got waved out on the circle here. Arizona gets the first possession. Valimaki with it in his own end. Now over to Clayton Keller. And take it in behind his net. Running out of room. Out of Valimaki. Valimaki spinning around a few times. Oh, he just about lost it. Now he'll get it out. Down the left side to Keller. Into the oiler end. For Schmaltz. Oh, what a save by Pickard. Here's Keller. Oh, Pickard got that too. And up the right wing, Nugent Hopkins brings it out. Now on the right side to Drysaddle. Springs him in, waiting, passing to Nurse. And it went over his stick. What saves by Calvin Pickard. Incredible goaltending early in the overtime. Oilers still have it, and it's Nugent Hopkins along the blue line. Into the slot, a shot, and it launches off of wow. Valimaki and out of play. And a chance on a two-on-one the other way, but Darnell couldn't pick it up cleanly after two great stops. Oh. Coyotes could have won the game twice. Yep. Look at this. Hyman and Henrique. With Echo. With Echo. No yeah. Bouchard yet. Top five scoring defenseman in the league. I'm sure he's next. Ace off to the right of Emelka. It's in some skates, and Cooley's going to bring it out for the Coyotes with Gunther. In over the line. Cooley over to Gunther. Has it left side. Trying to go through the middle, and that's broken up. And it's Henrique to come out. Henrique with Hyman. He'll bring it in on the left wing. Give it to Zach Hyman. He'll come down that left side. He'll drive it in front. The save by Vamelka. Turning it up is Cooley. In overtime, Oilers and the Coyotes. Cooley into the Edmonton zone. Now we'll give it to Michelli. He's in the high slot. He's a tricky little player, Michelli. Right wing for Castle Ring to Michelli. He'll go over to the left wing. He'll shoot. He'll score. What a shot. Matias Michelli goes glove side on Pickard, and Arizona will win this 3-2 in overtime. I told you he was a tricky little player. That was a heck of a shot. It's a great shot. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was, a, that was a good shot. Michelli's 15th of the year. That was a BB. The overtime didn't last long, but it, it didn't lack for excitement. Edmonton did get a shot off, and they're two on one. Hard net drive from Zach Hyman, and Vamelka basically stole a game here. I mean, logically speaking, probably should have been a 3 2 game, maybe a 4 3 game. You would have liked to have seen a little bit more offense tonight from the Oilers, but what a shot. Oh. Just ripped it. Glove side of Pickard. Adam Henrique there. I don't think it got a piece of Henrique's stick. I just think it was a great shot yeah. from Michelli. And so the Oilers lose the game. 3 2. Drop to 48 24 and 6. Four games left. And uh, three points behind Vancouver. You needed to be two for me. Didn't get there. Should be a fun game tomorrow night. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, uh, just the just the the juice of a, a Canucks yeah, game a in Edmonton. Completely and, different yeah. feel in the building in Vancouver. You know, Pedersen signing that uh, eight-year extension, eleven point six million. He's you know he's up around uh, eighty-eight points on the season, a uh, hundred-point season for J.T. Miller. Those are our top two centers. I got a Lindholm who's only got the nine points in the 23 games for Vancouver, but that's a strong one, two, three presence down the middle. They're a dominant team in the faceoff circle. Uh, Miller, 56.5%. Lindholm's at 60% since he's gone to Vancouver. They got support scoring on the wings with guys like Besser, who's got a 40-goal campaign. Garland, uh, Garland's a bit like Michelli, a smaller guy, yep. real smart with the puck. Hoaglander's had a solid year. He's over 20 goals. Dakota Joshua, Rick Tockett has uh, got him going, so... 
this is gonna this is gonna be a, a heck of a game. Hughes and Ronick, you know, combined plus 74 this season between the two of them. Do we get Thatcher Demko? Let's it's for he he practiced for real yesterday. Yeah, and so. We'll see whether or not do they start him against the Oilers. He was on LTIR with a knee injury. Uh, the Canucks 44, sorry, 48, 22, and 9. And the Oilers uh, will drop with this loss to 48, uh, 24, and 6. So the two teams very close. The difference in the season between the two squads was Vancouver winning all three games, two in blowouts, 8, 1, and 6, 2 at home. Should be an awesome game tomorrow night at Rogers Place. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Uh, here it was Matthias Michelli in overtime. Minute 35 in from Kessel Ring and Doan. Michelli's 15th of the year, and that ended this one here tonight for Edmonton. It was Darnell Nurse and Adam Henrique scoring. Evander Kane had a pair of assists. Logan Cooley and Josh Doan also scoring for the Coyotes. So Coyotes win it 3-2 in overtime here at Rogers Place. A Rogers postgame show is coming up next. Exclusive live interviews, expert analysis, and game highlights. This is the Rogers postgame show show once again here's bob stopper on the oilers radio network fogel back to nurse left wing point he'll shoot scores nurse let it go kane was in front of the net and this game is tied at two yeah kane uh with the net front thought there might have been a deflection but darnell nurse gets credit for the goal as 10th of the year uh fogel and kane draw the assist that tied a 2-2 early in the third period it went to overtime. Michelli snaps one home for the GW GNOT. Arizona wins 3-2. That's the Highlight Zone Century Casino. All ins, all games, all season Century Casino. Three great locations. Edmonton, St. Albert. And next to the Edmonton International Airport at Century Mile. Welcome to the Winter Zone. This is a Rogers Post Game Show on the Oilers Radio Network. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout? You're on. The sleep you need? No more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after? I look and feel better. Moderation. It's worth it. Be inspired at Drinks and AB.ca, a message from AGLC. Chemco is building industry across Canada, and now they're on the lookout for civil and electrical project managers, estimators, and superintendents to join their dedicated team. Why Chemco? Because Chemco cares. They put people first, offering top tier compensation packages and an unwavering commitment to safety. At Chemco, safety isn't just a priority, it's everybody's business. Ready to be part of a team that truly values you? Visit chemco.com slash careers today. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout? You're on. The sleep you need? No more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after? I look and feel better. Moderation. It's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. This is the Rogers Post Game Show on the Oilers Radio Network. Down the left side to Keller, into the Oiler end. First ball, oh, oh, what a save by Pickard. Here's Keller, oh, Pickard got that too. And up the right wing, Nugent Hopkins. That's the save of the game, brought to you by Access Insurance, Alberta Oil Field and Construction Contractors. You can count on huge saves when they need it the most. Visit accessinsurancegroup.com. We're in the Rogers Post Game Show. Rogers is Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network. The Legacy Heating and Cooling Broadcast Booth, Legacy Heating and Cooling, home of no payments and no interest for a year. We bring a order inside the game analyst, Rob Brown. Rob, the orders were not good in the first. They were pretty good from that point on. Uh, they ended up out shooting the Arizona Coyotes 32-17 to after the first period. Uh, unfortunately for them, the goals were 2-2, and Arizona got the 1-0 and OT. Your thoughts overall in this game tonight? Well, it, it, there was a letdown. The others didn't have the... Yeah. They, they weren't emotionally engaged in this game from the get-go. I mean, this wasn't Vegas or Colorado or Dallas or L.A. It was Arizona, and it showed early in the game, and I give credit to Arizona. They played very good in, in the first period, uh, and then the others took over the game. Having said all of that, the last five, six minutes... Uh, when the Oilers should have had this shut down, it was Arizona that were better in the third period, yes. the last six minutes. A number of great play or great opportunities. I thought Calvin Pickard was excellent in this game. I thought the line of Henrique, Kane, and Fogel had a very strong game. Darnell Nurse was good in this game. Yep. Leon was good. Uh, but when you allow a team that's not as good as you to hang around, every team in the National Hockey League has two or three players that can beat you. And if you let them hang around, they just need that one opportunity. And we saw that Pickard made two unbelievable saves in overtime, but finally he got beat with a great shot. So this was a game that 
uh, the Oilers probably played uh, a B game. Not even a B game. Well, as the, yeah, well, as the game went on, they got better. But, the, the, I mean, if you're going to look at one positive out of it, they got one point, and that still allows them to control their destiny here. If they win out, they still And, and the they division. secure second place in the division. Well, that's always been secured. We knew that was going to happen. It's first place that they're looking at. Yep. And if they win their final four games, they win first place in the division. So the one point allowed them to do that, and it makes tomorrow night's game very, very exciting. Well, speaking of tomorrow night... Uh what do you figure? Connor in or out? I think Connor will be in. Me too. I think he'll be in. I think that he got a few extra days rest. I mean, I saw the video of him at practice. I wish I looked like that. Here's the guy. He's practicing because he's injured. And I'm like, wow, I've never skated that fast in my life. Even when you push the DVD on fast forward, I couldn't do what he was doing. So uh, he will play tomorrow night. I don't think I don't think Demko plays. If I'm Vancouver, I'm not risking putting him in this quickly. I was surprised Aiden Hill played the other night against the Oilers. Yeah. But I, I do believe that the Vancouver Canucks are going to take this game very seriously. I think they they don't want the slide to go any further. They want to win their division, and if they win tomorrow night, that sets them up. So I think it's two very good teams going at it. And the Edmonton Oilers right now, I believe they owe the Vancouver Canucks their best effort because the first three games of the season, they did not give it. Well, I mean, uh, Vancouver blew them out 8-1 in game one. Game two, in fairness, Edmonton outshot the Canucks 41-16, Rob, and lost the game 4-3. Too many, yeah, they, but too many big mistakes. They didn't give up a lot of shots, but the mistakes they made were huge. Uh, Vancouver's good. And to me, uh, Quinn Hughes is, is the... He's going to win the Norris. He's been the best defenseman all season long. I enjoy watching him play. Uh, it's it'll be a test for the Oilers tomorrow. Night. Were you a little surprised that it didn't have Bouchard on the ice in overtime? Yeah, I I was, but I, I thought Bush. I, and this is one I said earlier. I thought Nurse had a really good game. I yep. don't think Bouchard did. Yep. I think Bouchard struggled a bit tonight, and I think that the coaching staff saw that and pulled Bouchard off, put out Nurse. Who, I mean, they they created some chances. Nurse did a great job in the corner with two Arizona Coyotes yep. on him, keeping the puck alive. The Oilers had their chances, uh, but. Arizona, they got some skill. This is a uh, a nice team to watch, Arizona. They got wow. some good young hockey players. And Gunther wasn't really going tonight, and he's got a high ceiling. Like, they between oh. him and Cooley, you know, and I realize the focus right now is, you know, it's obviously on Clayton Keller, and it should be. He's got 70 goals the last two years. Like, he's a good player, but the, the, that, that Cooley-Gunther, you know, tandem, they're going to be pretty good. Well, team. if you get Gunther and Cooley another year under their belt next year, and that's your second line with Kraus, and then you got Keller and Kerfoot and Schmaltz as your first line, and that, uh, that Doan, I like Doan, and he skates like his dad. And he was he was on the ice <laughs> he, for the overtime game winning goal. He, he, he's good. This is and like I, they've got one thirty year old in their lineup tonight. The majority of the players are between twenty three and twenty five. This is a good team. If they have a good off season signing players, and I they're gonna have forty five million dollars in cap space. You got to figure the new owner Rob in uh, in Salt Lake, Ryan Smith. He, 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 he wants to make a, a splash. He, he wants to be good. And I've read everything about him. He seems like a, he's yeah. an owner. You want as part of this league uh, i think it's exciting i I, th yeah. I i think that what the uh, they got a they got a ton of draft picks that mm -hmm. they can flip potentially and they don't need any more draft capital they can move some of those picks and add a couple players they they could substantially and you know what this guy's a pretty good coach yes this has been a difficult situation the last couple of years he's a pretty good coach and they've, they've got a lot of good young players to build around I, this is a team that i think is going to start pushing for a playoff spot yeah. and it could be next year if they make the right moves in the off season so uh it was a team that the oilers i don't think I wouldn't say respected. I think they just the, the emotional attachment to this game didn't come until the Coyotes had pushed a little. Yeah. And their skill level allowed them to stay tight. And when they got their chance, as we saw in overtime, they made them pay. I think we're all looking forward, though, to this one being over and looking forward to tomorrow night's game. I believe Connor this, will play, and yeah. I believe it will be a fast-paced playoff-style hockey game. Who do, you, who do you pull out for Edmonton? <laughs> that's a that's a hard one. Because Holloway had a quiet night tonight. He after. did. I think it's I think it's Holloway that you pull out simply because yeah. you can't put him on the fourth line because he doesn't play penalty kill. Yeah. And so you're gonna have trouble finding him ice time. And he wasn't as noticeable tonight yeah. as he was last game. And here, well, it's funny the the line of uh, Kane with Henrique and Fogel, Fogel, fantastic. You're like, let's leave them together. But if you do that. 
Who does Leon play with? Yeah, there you go. So it's going to be tough, but yeah, I think I think it'd be Holloway that comes out of the lineup, and that's a. It's again, the Oilers are a good team now. Good players come out of the lineup because they're deep. Rob, great stuff. Sounds good, Bob. All right, the smart play of the night is brought to you by Catelli Smart Pasta with all natural ingredients. It's a smart move for your next meal. Look for the box the next time you shop. We're going to give it tonight to Darnell Nurse. Uh, you know, put the puck to the net to tie the game two two. Had a couple real good defensive plays. Um, unfortunately, the puck hop on him and the setup from Leon Dry settle in overtime. That said, made another play where he fenced off two players on the wall. This is the Rogers postgame show. The owners have lost 3-2 in overtime, but they've secured second place in the Pacific Division. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor is your number one stop to get game day ready. For a limited time, on game days only, Oilers fans can come by a Sobeys or Safeway Liquor store and get stocked up with a 15-pack of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, now $26.99 each. Available only at select Sobeys and Safeway Liquor stores in the Edmonton area. Must be 18+. plus. See in store for details. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Proud fans and partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Oilers Hockey is brought to you by the Butcher Shop at Friesen Brothers. You're tuned in to the Rogers Post Game Show on the official voice of the Edmonton Oilers, 630 Chan, and on the Oilers Radio Network. No Alberta Blue Cross Insurance Goal Game. Whatever life brings, we've got the coverage you need. Visit ab.bluecross.ca. Bob Stoffer with you, Rogers Post Game Show. And we are going to go to a Pizza 73 out of town scoreboard brought to you by Pizza 73, the official pizza of the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes beat the St. Louis Blues 5-2. to two. And the Nashville Predators 5-1 over the Chicago Blackhawks. Meanwhile, the Vegas Golden Knights are up 4-1 over the Minnesota Wild. That's headed to the third period. Calgary leads Anaheim 4-0. Just if you take a look at the standings here, uh, Vegas with that victory combined with St. Louis's loss uh, would ensure the Vegas Golden Knights are in the playoffs and we'd have uh, our eight teams in the Western Conference. So Vegas is going to win that game to get to 94 points. St. Louis gave it a valiant effort, negative goal differential on the season, but they're at 89 with two games left, so they can't catch Vegas. So the Golden Knights are going to be in the playoffs. Here at Rogers Place, the Oilers playing without Connor McDavid do put up 39 shots on goal, but ultimately fall 3-2 in overtime. They get Vancouver uh, tomorrow night. Three points behind the Canucks, a game in hand for the Edmonton Oilers. Four games left for Edmonton, three for Vancouver. The Oilers, by the way, cannot be caught for second spot in the Pacific Division. Uh, last score we have down on the American Hockey League, Bakersfield Condors are up 2-0 over the Vegas or over the uh, Koshala Valley uh, squad, uh, which is, that's the Firebirds, and that is uh, the farm team of the Seattle Kraken. 2 nothing Bakersfield through 2 over uh, Koshala Valley. Again, Oilers lose. 3-2 in overtime to Arizona. This is the Rogers Post Game Show on the Oilers Radio Network. Over the last decade, the world of work has changed dramatically. It's a change that can cause a disconnect between a company and its employees. But a partnership with Aon can help by making decisions that create a more flexible, engaged, and resilient workforce. Aon's experience and expertise, global understanding, and advanced analytics ensure that every client is better informed and better advised so that they can make better decisions. What Whatever the next decade brings, Aon is in the business of better decisions. MIC is a leader in medical imaging and the official medical imaging provider to the Edmonton Oilers. Make MIC your choice.
Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, the game doesn't stop for injury. MIC Sports Medicine Imaging Specialists can help you get back in the game with a timely and expert diagnosis. Go where the pros go. For a location near you, visit mic.ca. All right, let's go to the three stars. Tonight brought to you by Molson, whether it's Canadian Ultra Export or Excel, there's a Molson with your name on it. Sportsnet picks these stars. Third star tonight, the game winning goal, Matias Michelli. Second star tonight with a total of 37 saves for Alba Melka. And the first star, or sorry, third star from the Edmonton Oilers is Evander Kane with a pair of assists. The Rogers post game shows heard following each of our NHL broadcasts. Oilers in Vancouver Canucks, 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Puck drop tonight, uh, tomorrow night on the Oilers Radio Network for my play by play partner. This season, Cam Moon, who called tonight's game. Jack Michaels, who's got the call of Saturday night's game, tomorrow's game. Rob Brown, Reed Wilkins, Brendan Escott, studio producers, Kellen Kennedy at the helm tonight, Angie Quinnell, as well as our longtime engineer here at Rogers Place, Troy Bowler, Bob Stoffer, saying so long. The Oilers drop to 10 0 2 in their last 12 home games. They're 6 1 2 in their last nine games overall. They lose 3 2 in overtime to Arizona. So long, everybody. Post game.